Okay, hopefully this time OBS won't fucking crash uh, as soon as I start. So it looks like we're good. All right, cool. Let me just start the intro. Butter? I don't even know her.
will find the one, the only, slash butter. Stream with the butter on it. Thirty months, thirty cups of butter, butter stream, butter challenge. Holly Jones, we butter. Twenty-five months. Special time for butter. A butter stream sounds nice, but I would prefer a butter river. Maybe a butter pond. A butter lake is too much though. Good luck, Holly. Strongest butter warrior. Butter? No, no, no. Butter. Dog, dog. 
dog with the butter, the dog with the butter on him, butter, butter dog. Everyone say thank you, butter. Smile. Shut the fuck up. some of me my cat name of chowder loves butter if we leave butter out he will eat all of it If you were friends with someone, would you be Paolo Tones? Another mouth of Holly. That's a question mark.
Butter. butter. From Wikipedia. The free encyclopedia. For other uses, see butter. Disambiguation. Butter is a dairy product made from fat and protein components of churned cream. It is a semi-solid emulsion at room temperature, consisting of approximately 80% butter fat. Butter fat, or milk fat, is the fatty portion of milk. Milk and cream are often sold according to the amount of butter fat they contain. The fat content of milk is the proportion of milk by weight made up by butter fat. The fat content, particularly of cow's milk, is modified to make a variety of products. Extremely buttered sub. It is used at room temperature as a spread, melted as a condiment, and used as a fat in baking, sauce making, pan frying, and other cooking procedures. Most frequently made from cow's milk, butter can also be manufactured from the milk of other mammals, including sheep, goats, buffalo, and yaks. It is made by churning milk or cream to separate the fat globules from the buttermilk. Salt was added to butter from antiquity to help preserve it, particularly when being transported. Salt may still play a role in preservation, but it is less important today as the entire supply chain is usually refrigerated. In modern times, salt butter, may be butter, added for butter, taste. Butter, 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 margarine, butter, butter, butter. Thank you, butter, for the butter. Food colorings butter. are sometimes added to butter. Rendering butter, removing the water and milk solids, produces clarified butter or ghee, which is almost entirely butter fat. I want to see how the TTS pronounces fat globules. Fat globules? Like that. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. Butter is a water and oil emulsion, resulting from an inversion of the cream, where the milk proteins are the emulsifiers. Butter remains a f butter remains a firm solid when refrigerated, but softens to a spreadable consistency at room temperature, and melts to a thin liquid consistency at 32 to 35 degrees Celsius, which is about 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The density of butter is 911 grams per liter, or 15 and one quarter ounce per USPT. I don't fucking know what that means. It generally has a pale yellow color. Puzz, do you know what a PT is? I don't. <laughs> also, hi, Puzz is here. <laughs> hi, I'm here. I'm learning about butter. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. It generally has a pale yellow color, but varies from deep yellow to nearly white. Its natural, unmodified color is dependent on the source animal's feed and genetics, but the commercial manufacturing process sometimes manipulates the color with food colorings, like annatto or carotene. What is annatto? She flat on my butt uh, like to. Oh, you can't say that on Twitch, but thank you for the tip. Uh, an orange-red condiment and food coloring derived from the seeds of the Akiote tree, I'm probably pronouncing that horribly, a native to tropical America, used to impart a yellow or orange color to food, but sometimes also for its flavor and aroma. It's what makes American cheddar so orange. Goddamn, I'm learning so much about cheddar today. Here's a picture of solid and melted butter. Everyone get a good look at this. This will be on the test. Take a look at this butter. Check out this butter. Examine this Check butter. Out. Check it out. Get a feeling for this butter. Check it out. Contents. Etymology. Production. Types. Subdivided into clarified butter, whey butter, and... European butters. You didn't see? Oh, sorry. Here we go. Take a look. Take a look. History. Further subdivided into Middle Ages and industrialization. You didn't see it? Oh, sorry, sorry. Hang on. Here you go. You guys, you, you gotta be paying attention. This is gonna be on the quiz. Here's, here's the butter. There you go. You, you really don't want to fail butter, so please be careful. We're, we're gonna circulate the PowerPoint after the lecture, so, so make sure you review. We're gonna circulate the butter. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> pass the butter around. Everyone uh, take one lick. On it. <laughs> Worldwide production, storage, divided into packing, subdivided into United States, elsewhere, and bulk packing. Ah yes, the two countries, United States, and everywhere else. 
that's, that's, I feel like that's a pretty good summary of how a lot of information on the internet is presented in the United yeah. States, and then fucking everywhere else, I guess. Bulk packaging. Although I guess to be fair, there's something to be said about, um, specifically how the United States does dairy, so I guess maybe it's at least a little bit relevant this time. Yeah, but still. <laughs> That's so cool how they let Koji Pro make their own unit of measurement for butter in the US. Thank you for the tip. Uh, in cooking and gastronomy, as opposed to what else? Nutritional information. Health concerns. See also. References. And please take special note of further reading. External links. <sighs> Etymology. The word butter derives via Germanic languages from the Latin butyrum, which is the Latinization of the Greek buteron. This may be a compound of bus, ox or cow, uh, turos, cheese, that is cow cheese. The word turos, or cheese, is attested in uh, Mycenaean Greek. I hope I pronounced that right. The Latinized form is found in the name but butyric acid, a compound found in rancid butter. Rancidification is the process of complete or incomplete uh, autoxidation or hydrolysis of fats and oils when exposed to air, light, moisture, or bacterial action, producing short chain aldehydes, ketones, and free fatty acids. It's free fatty acids for you, Jim. It's free you, fatty acids. You gotta let it spoil, but the acids are free. And dairy products Best such way. as Parmesan cheese. Production. Main article. Churning of butter. Unhomogenized milk and cream contain butter fat in microscopic globules. These globules are surrounded by membranes made of phospholipids, fatty acid emulsifiers, and proteins, which prevent the fat in milk from poo- t I almost thought that said pooing together. <laughs> That's not what it says. Make sure your butter does not pooing together. Your butter should not poo. If it does that, get scared. Uh... Butyric acid is what also makes vomit taste the way it does. Real nasty outside of the context of the few foods it's in, like Parmigiano Reggiano. And if you're an American who's used to it, Hershey's chocolate. Yeah, I remember hearing that a couple of times about Hershey's specifically, and how it's like kind of why it has that kind of weird funky taste it's got. What uh, do you and know? Anyways, prevents the fat in milk from pooling together into a single mass. Uh, butter is produced by agitating cream which damages these membranes and allows the milk fats to conjoin, separating from the other parts of the cream. Variations in the production method will create butters with different consistencies. Wow, a Wikipedia <laughs> article about butter. My girls would love it. In fact, the first <laughs> sentence one of them ever said was I like butter. The fucking TTS voice made that sound so fucking sarcastic and miserable, like, <laughs> Wow, Holly, another fucking Wikipedia stream. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. <laughs> Create butters with different consistencies, mostly due to the butterfat composition in the finished product. Butter contains fat in three separate forms. Free butterfat, butterfat crystals, and undamaged fat globules. In the finished product, different proportions of these forms result in different consistencies within the butter. Butters with many crystals are harder than butters dominated by free fats. Citation needed. Churning produces small butter grains floating in the water-based portion of the cream. The watery liquid is called buttermilk, although the buttermilk most common today is instead a directly fermented skimmed milk. I remember learning that a while ago and thinking, oh, huh, that's interesting. You will be sharing much trivia? Thank you for that, Doc. I'll try and read them and catch them when I can. <laughs> <laughs> the buttermilk is drained off. Sometimes more buttermilk is removed by rinsing the grains with water. Then the grains are worked. Pressed and kneaded together. When prepared manually, this is done using wooden boards called scotch hands. This consolidates the butter into a solid mass and breaks up embedded pockets of buttermilk or water into tiny droplets. Citation needed. Commercial butter is about 80% butter fat and 15% water. Traditionally made butters may have as little as 65% fat and 30% water. Butterfat is a mixture of triglycerides. Tri tri 
Butterfat is a mixture of triglyceride, thank you, triester derived from glycerol, and three of any of several fatty acid groups. Churning cream into butter using a handheld mixer. Pro buttermilk strats use buttermilk in place of milk or other dairy if the butter fat is unnecessary, imparts a very distinct and tangy flavor. That's true, that is true. Throwing a little bit of buttermilk in a thing you're making can, uh, can be real nice sometimes. Uh, use buttermilk as your hydrating agent in meatballs and meatloaf. I think I tried it in meatballs once and it was pretty goddamn good. Thank you, Adam Olympius, for the sub. Thank you for all the subs and stuff we've been having, uh, this stream. As you might understand by what this stream has been so far, I might have a bit of trouble keeping up with literally every single one that happens, but I do, uh, appreciate them all. Uh, there is also, uh, a tip goal. Uh, I fully expect we're not gonna meet it. It's fine if we don't. Uh, but you know, uh, we got bills to pay and stuff, and, uh, this will incentivize something happening sooner, I'll say. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Types. Before modern factory butter making, cream was usually collected from several milkings, <laughs> that's a strange way to word that, and was therefore several days old and somewhat fermented by the time it was made into butter. Butter made from a fermented cream is known as cultured butter. During fermentation, the cream naturally sours as bacteria convert milk sugars into lactic acid. The fermentation process produces additional aroma compounds, including uh, diacetyl, which makes for a fuller flavored and more, quote, buttery tasting product. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on a second, hang on a second. They've got a 15 and then sub point 35. What? What do you mean sub point 35? Oh Unless no, you mean, like, like nested citations. That's scary. I don't want to think about that. No, 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 you get back here. Where were we? Where were we? Uh... This one. There we are. Dairy products are often pasteurized during production to kill pathogenic bacteria and other microbes. This is so sad for them, by the way. Uh, butter made from pasteurized fresh cream is called sweet cream butter. Production of sweet cream butter first became common in the 19th century with the development of refrigeration and the mechanical cream separator. Hey, thank you, Doc, for the tip. I think pastries should happen earlier. Also, pro butter strats, a shortcut in making your own homemade cultured butter. Add some yogurt to your heavy cream before you whip it with a high power whisk. Ooh, interesting. I never thought about tossing in yogurt to make a your own butter. Thank you, Wizard Meals, for the sub as well. Butter has anything inside of it. I don't actually know very much about how you make butter, so I reckon at least some capacity the stream might be, uh. A learning experience for me. <laughs> uh, sweet cream butter first became common in the 19th century, the development of refrigeration, and the mechanical cream separator. <laughs> mechanical cream separator does sound like a torture device, but it isn't. I think. I think? Butter may also refer to Butter, surname Butter Project, an online video streaming platform. Why is there an Butter online Star, video Butter streaming Star, platform Star, called Butter? Butter the village. Why not? You know, you make a good point. You could put a guy in there and it would kill them. But I guess you could do that for a lot of machines. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. <laughs> Cultured butter is preferred throughout continental Europe, while sweet cream butter dominates in the United States and the United Kingdom. Cultured butter is somewhat- is sometimes labeled European style butter in the United States. Uh... Although cultured butter is made and sold by some, especially Amish dairies. Commercial raw cream butter is virtually unheard of in the United States. Raw cream butter is generally only found made at home by consumers who purchased raw whole milk directly from dairy farmers. Uh, skimmed the cream themselves. Excuse me. Skimmed the cream themselves and made butter with it. It is rare in Europe as well. Thank you, Shark Waves, for the tip. H -M -M -G -H -M -M -H -M -H -M -G butter. Here's our fucking milk flow chart! <laughs> I guess! Remember, this is going to be on the quiz. Memorize it. <laughs> Alright, so... We have to plan our, our milk build here. So we, we're starting with raw milk, of course, because that's how you start. Uh, if you coagulate with rennet, you get sweet whey. 
Uh, and then from sweet whey, you can make powdered whey, uh, which is my favorite loperit from, uh, from, from Final Fantasy XIV. Pasteurized milk into soured milk into cheese curd. Into Deep Space Nine? Into cream cheese? Sour yeah, you know. milk cheese. You, you remember that bit uh, in Star Trek where they had, where Odo had the cheese curd uh, and he was trying to make it into delicious sour way, uh, but he got it wrong and he was like, Quark! Every time I think about Odo shouting Quark, I just think about that one YouTube poop where they make him go shout Quark and then he's like, Begin log. Stick my ass in my butt. Shove it up my butthole. But that didn't happen on the show. And I wish it did. By the way, you've memorized the whole chart, right? I, th I, I, I gotta imagine that was enough time. Quark is really sour and good with this Nutella. Huh. Good for him, I think. Either way, he is some money cusser epic. No, 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 no. Pastries is unrelated to the Minecraft Alanis, Alanis Morissette cover. Uh, that I have to, like, get off my ass and do soon. <laughs> unrelated to getting more money, because people already paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> Quark is what you would call farmer cheese. I see. Interesting. Clarified butter. Clarified butter has almost all of its water and milk solids removed, uh, leaving almost pure butter fat. Clarified butter is made by heating butter to its melting point and then allowing it to cool. After settling, the remaining components separate by density. At the top, whey proteins form a skin, which is removed. The resulting butter fat is then poured off from the mixture of water and... I never knew if that was pronounced casein or casein proteins that settle to the bottom. I'm not actually sure. Let's see. Uh, casein. There we go. Uh, from Latin and caseous cheese. Interesting. Where the fuck was I? I lost my place already. Well, back to start. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're on the chart. We are on the chart. Right. Ghee is clarified butter that has been heated to around 100 degrees Celsius, 120 degrees Celsius, uh, or 250 degrees Fahrenheit after the water evaporated, turning the milk solids brown. Brown. This process is this process flavors the ghee and also produces antioxidants that help protect it from rancidity. Because of this, ghee can be kept for six to eight months under normal conditions. It is brown. Ghee is really what about cool. under abnormal conditions? Pardon? What about under abnormal conditions? Under abnormal conditions, ghee can be kept for a couple of minutes because it got bombarded with uh, incredible doses of radiation, causing all the organic compounds to rapidly deteriorate. I see. Good to and, know. And then it explodes and you're covered in like scalding hot butter fat. Well, that's no good. Right. That's why you got to keep it under normal conditions. I've learned a lesson today. That's what the normal pills are for. For the ghee. <laughs> That's what the point of the butter is. Whey butter. Cream may be separated, usually by a centrifuge or a sedimentation, from whey instead of milk, as a byproduct of cheese making. Whey butter may be made from whey cream. Whey cream and butter have a low f lower fat content and taste more salty, tangy, and, quote, cheesy. They're also cheaper to make than sweet cream and butter. The fat content of whey is low, so a thousand pounds of whey will typically give three pounds of butter?! <laughs> what?! <laughs> That's so small! That's so little amount! That's so tiny! <laughs> I don't think you should make butter this way! I mean, hey, what else are you gonna do with the byproduct, I suppose? I suppose. Pictured here is liquid clarified butter. Getting closer on that. Thank you, boss. <laughs> Do you like it? I'm taking in every pixel. How about this? Get a load of those pixels. Is this good? This is this is why you're here on my stream today? For this? It's not pee! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Pro-way strats from Doc and Chat. 
So long as you did not acidify your way with, say, citric acid in a way to make homemade mozzarella, you can make ricotta cheese from your way. It's delicious when homemade, and you can still use your way. So good. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Good to know. And thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. European butters. There are several butters produced in Europe with protected geographical indications. These include... Beurre d'Ardenne from Belgium. Beurre d'Ardenne is a type of butter made in the Ardennes of Belgium from cow's milk. As a traditional product of the area, it received Belgian Appellation d'Origine by royal decree in 1984, and received European Protected Designation of Origin status in 1996. The areas where it is produced are within Wallonia, and include the provinces of Luxembourg, Namur, and Liège. Thank you, Terry's Taxidermy, for the reset. Much appreciated. Way that shit Miss Muffet was notching on. And Kurds! Along came a spider who shat down beside her, uh, and they had a nice treat together. Uh, and to this day, they're still making a way, if you think about it. The area is where Love it is produced. Poem. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a classic. The areas where it is produced within Wallonia are, are within Wallonia and include the provinces of Luxembourg, Namur, and Liège. Uh, to qualify, production must take place entirely in those areas, from milking of the cows, through to churning, and final maturation of the butter. Almost read that wrong. Mortifying. <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess now that I haven't done it wrong, it'd be funny if I did it on purpose. I thought it almost said final masturbation of the butter. <laughs> not that kind of- not that kind of stream. These streams are intended for mature audiences. And maybe made by churning milk, cream, or a mixture of both. The final product must be at least 82% butterfat and butyric acid. Beurre d'Isigny from France. Beurre d'Isigny is a type of cow's milk made in the Vey Bay area and the valleys of the rivers running into it, comprising several French communes surrounding Isigny sur Mer and straddling the Manche and uh, Calvados departments of northern France. The butter is a natural golden color as a result of high level of ca carotenoids. Or carotenoids? One of those, probably. Unless it's neither of those. The butter contains 82% fatty solids and is rich in oleic acid and mineral salts, particularly sodium. Uh, these salts provide flavor and a long shelf life. The local producers requested protection for their milk products as early as the 1930s. With, with a definition of the production area, finally receiving PDO status in 1996. PDO stands for Poo Dick Awful. Remember this. This woman is making the butter every day, and you better be fucking thankful for her. Everyone in chat, you must say thank you, butter lady. Please. Sorry, you were rude to me, so now you get no butter. That's what happens when you're rude to her. Beurre uh, Charente Poitou, which also includes uh, Beurre de Charente, Beurre de Deux Sèvres, under the same classification from France. Wikipedia does not have an article with this exact name. <laughs> Beurre Rose from Luxembourg. Beurre Rose is a cultured milk butter produced in Luxembourg under the Marque Nationale of the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. It is sometimes consumed as a spread but mostly commonly used as an ingredient in a variety of sweet and savory dishes. The designation Beurre de Marque Nationale Luxembourgeois was established in 1932 by specific legislation. Why are people saying mods? What happened? What, what, what happened? What, what happened? What'd you do? Who, who are we banning? What's happening? What have you done, chat? What is the song? Is it Kirby? This is a uh, butter building from Kirby. <laughs> I did, uh, I did put together a butter playlist and that's why the stream was late. <laughs> it's important. In 1970, the legislation was amended to establish a national protected brand name for Luxembourg butter. It holds a PDO classification in Europe, which it received in 2000. Its name is derived from the pink quality label the Luxembourg Slate has awarded it for its various properties, such as its credibility and taste. The butter isn't actually pink itself? Fuck this, I don't care anymore. God damn it. Why are we even here? Disappointing. We're here to learn about butter. I'm uh, learning. Me too! Mantequilla, or Mantequilla de Soria, from Spain. No article. 
a Mantea de la Ulgel y la Cerdania from Spain. I don't know any Spanish. You can point and laugh at me if you want. But more seriously, though, your VODs bring me so much joy, and I hope I get to see more streams of yours in the future. Also, thank you, Butter Lady, for all the butter. Hey, hell yeah! Thanks for tuning on in, and thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. And uh, Rukava White Butter, or maybe Rusava White Butter, uh, from Latvia. Uh, Rusava White Butter is a traditional cow's milk butter produced in Rusava, Latvia. Does not say how to pronounce it, but it's a village in Latvia! 500. Oh, I know it's in Latvia. Good news, everyone! As of 2006, 550 residents. Let's go. Ow. Uh, traditional cow's milk butter produced there in Latvia since the early 20th century. The butter has protected designation of origin classification in the European Union, which it received in 2018. History. <sighs> Drink a water, because it's going to be a long one. I'll drink your water. Margarine used to be legally required to be dyed pink to distinguish it from butter. What? Huh? I fucking know nothing about margarine, so... <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, Latch, for the tip. Much appreciated. Before bed, every night, you must thank the butter lady. You gotta, yeah. Curse the margarine goblin to maintain balance. <laughs> the fucking margarine ghoul is doing so much to hurt everyone, and you have to cuss them out every night. Thank you for the tip. <laughs> According to Harold McGee. Harold James McGee is an American author who writes about chemistry and history of food science and cooking. According to him, the earliest milk production would have been from sheep or goat's milk in the area of Iran and Iraq around 9000 to 8000 BCE, and butter would have soon been found naturally in milk containers. Ah, uh, thank you for the resub. Have you eaten butter? I mean, I had a bit today on toast. Uh, cattle are not thought to have been domesticated for another thousand years. A later Sumerian tablet, dating to approximately 2500 BCE, describes the butter-making process from the milking of cattle. While contemporary Sumerian tablets identify butter as a ritual offering. Contemporary Sumerian tablets? Well, I suppose... I guess they just mean more recently found ones, or like ones yeah. from like later on in the history. That, but, that makes more sense. But but the wording of that makes it sound like, yeah, you know, ancient Sumer is still there to this day. They're still making their tablets. They're still making those damn butter tablets. <laughs> I think that would actually be the funnier solution to all this. Mm -hmm. Specifically, all the different, you know, like countries and provinces and regions all around that area to this day uh, only convene uh, ritually as Sumer for butter. <laughs> In the Mediterranean, or yeah, in the Mediterranean climate, uh, unclarified butter spoils quickly, unlike cheese. Uh, so it is not a practical method of preserving the nutrients of milk. That's why we keep finding more epics of Gilgamesh. <laughs> <laughs> they keep making them. <laughs> oh shit! Everyone, wake up! Gilgamesh just came off hiatus. There's a new chapter out. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out. It turns out. Uh, fucking the Fate franchise. <laughs> Modern day ancient Sumerian tablets still being made to this day. Uh, where was I? Where was I? The ancient Greeks and Romans seem to have considered butter a food more fit for the northern barbarians. A play by the Greek comic poet Anaxandrides, who was an ancient Greek comic poet of the middle comedy. His father was Anaxander. Uh, he was victorious ten times. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. Refers to Thracians as Butyrophagoi, butter eaters. Uh, in his natural history, Pliny the Elder called butter, quote, The most delicate of food among barbarous nations. And goes on to describe its medicinal properties. You know that thing that butter is famous for? Medicinal properties? Plenty the Elder was on some shit. He was on some butter, is what he was on. <laughs> <laughs> where, where was I reading about Plenty the Elder recently? Was that in my science reading? Oh, we just read about Plenty the Elder. <laughs> to talk about the history of butter sciences? 
You know what? That was probably what it was. <laughs> Later, the physician, Galen, also described Butter as a medicinal agent only. <laughs> Strictly medicinal, do not eat! Traditional butter making in Palestine. Ancient techniques were still practiced in the early 20th century. Photo from National Geographic, March 1914. Neat. Middle Ages. In the cooler climates of Northern Europe, People could store butter longer before it spoiled. Scandinavia has the oldest tradition in Europe of butter export trade, dating at least to the 12th century. Pro-butter history, butter has always been a common person's food everywhere. Olive oil can be a common food among the Mediterranean, the rest of Europe and elsewhere used it when they wanted to show off economically. Butter is the fat of the people. Hell yeah. Good for the people. Hell yeah. Pliny the Elder's last bad take is sticking around Pompeii! <laughs> Thanks for that one! <laughs> After the fall of Rome and through much of the Middle Ages, butter was a common food across most of Europe, but had a low reputation, and so was consumed principally by peasants. Butter slowly became more accepted by the upper class, notably when the early 16th century Roman Catholic Church allowed its consumption during Lent. Bread and butter became common fare among the middle class and English in particular, or and the English in particular, rather, gained a reputation for their liberal use of melted butter as a sauce with meat and vegetables. Yeah, huh, there sure is a lot of uh, uh, early English cooking around that era. That's, um, a lot of butter. A lot of butter involved. Butter. A lot of put a butter on this. Cover it in the butter. Let's, uh, right. slather it on see, there. We haven't hit the, like, uh, the, the pastry episodes of Bake Off yet. You mm -hmm. should see how much butter goes into a fucking croissant. There's a lot of butter going into a croissant. That's true. <laughs> it's literally like they, they did one of their like interviews with, with uh, a professional baker as like little mm -hmm. here's some history and facts stuff, and it was literally they're like oh okay so uh, about what what's the ratio of like dough to butter here as you're preparing this and they went half fifty percent dough fifty percent butter. Let me tell you about making Queen Amon before. Here's the thing! Literally, Puz and I watched an episode of Bake Off where they made uh, Queen Amon, and that's literally what made me go, what if I just did a stream about butter? <laughs> <laughs> so you have Queen Amon to thank. Thank you for that one. <laughs> I have Also, yeah, I'm scared to hit the... I might just never watch the Mexican Week one. <laughs> I was literally talking with friends about that earlier today, and how it's so fucking funny. For some god- this isn't even butter anymore, this is just me talking about Bake Off. It's so fucking funny that they were like, yeah, here's- here's what we gotta do. We gotta get, like, a lot of largely, like, white British people to make Mexican food. And, like, not just because- there's- there's a- like, there's baking in Mexican cuisine, because there's baking all around the world! But specifically, they were like, alright, make tortillas and make them into tacos. And Paul Hollywood being fucking Paul Hollywood pronounces shit like tacos and pico de gallo. <laughs> Fuck, dude! <laughs> I think it was last- it was either last year or the year before they did a Japanese week and it was equally as bad. Yeah! Li literally, I was like on Balb stream earlier, we were just hanging out, the topic came up, and then someone in chat was like, oh yeah, they've been doing this for a while. They did a fucking Japanese episode. We were all just like, oh no. Oh no. Yeah, the new the newer seasons have unfortunately decided, oh, we're gonna broaden the themes a little bit and do things like Japanese week or like Mexican week. It's like, oh, you shouldn't. <laughs> we're gonna broaden our horizons in a very white people on the BBC broadening our horizons type of way. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's okay. I want you to watch you make a Queen of On. You don't have to broaden your horizons that much. <laughs> Like someone saying British Bake Off, uh, 
uh, wants to do ethnic food, they should have a granny in the correct ethnicity there who can smack Paul Hollywood with a newspaper? Literally, yes. I'm 1,000% in support of that. I think that would be great television. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, thank you for attending my Great British Bake Off Yellathon. Where, where were we? <laughs> I think we were talking about butter. You know, I think we might have been talking about butter. In antiquity, butter was used for fuel and lamps as a substitute for oil? Huh. You know what? You bet. It makes sense, I've just never thought about it. I'm, I'm so I used guess, to butter. I guess, you know, you're in a, you're in a pinch, you, you don't have enough lamp oil, uh, more shoes fucking closed, you got some, some, some milk fat around, <laughs> you, you do what you gotta do. Marshu is famous for being like, Butter, you want it? It's yours, my friend. I mean, it, it's a fat. You can melt it into an oil. It's flammable. It makes sense. It's just, I've always thought of butter specifically in, like, the modern context being, like, a, a culinary thing and not, you know, medicine or lamp oil. <laughs> oh, the butter the tower. Chat. <laughs> Funny enough, listening to butter building here, the butter tower of Rouen Cathedral. Uh, Cathédrale Primatiale Notre-Dame de l'Assomption de Rouen is a Roman Catholic church in Rouen, Normandy, France. It is the see of the Archbishop of Rouen, primate of Nor Normandy. It's famous for its three towers, each in a different style. Alright. Thanks for that. That's that fantasy novel people like, right? The three towers? <laughs> That's that Final Fantasy XIV expansion people, right? Like, Heaven's Word about the ruined cathedral and they're fighting the dragons? People love that one. Yeah, that sounds great. It was erected in the early 16th century when Archbishop Georges d'Amboise authorized the burning of butter during Lent instead of oil, which was scarce at the time. How fucking dire were these times under the fucking church when they had to come out and authorize you to use oil? <laughs> Jesus. The answer is dire. Yeah, huh? Across Northern Europe, butter was sometimes treated in a manner unheard of today. It was packed into barrels, called firkins. My firkin barrel's way too full of butter, I gotta get another one. God damn it, I hate it when that happens. Wait, 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 listen to this, listen to this! Firkin. Firkin. <laughs> Firkin. 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 How do I get this specific TTS voice? <laughs> that's not a TTS voice, that's someone's, like, actual voice recorded here. I see. Even better. <laughs> you best be a small wooden vessel or cask of indeterminate size used for butter and lard if you think we- Firkin. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dog Yelp, for the resub. Much appreciated. <laughs> and buried in peat bogs, perhaps for years. <laughs> Such, quote, bog butter would develop a strong flavor as it aged, but remain edible. In large part because of the unique, cool, yeah, it is pretty cool, huh? Airless, antiseptic, and acidic environment of a peat bog. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. Mom and Dad met and started dating because Mom thought she was eating a ball of cheese. It was, in reality, a ball of butter. I fucking oh, forgot yeah. about that! That's how our parents met! <laughs> it was like, at some party or another, the details don't matter, but my mom thought that she was eating cheese, and then, you know, my dad was like, you're eating butter. <laughs> That's uh, how they true met. <laughs> it was at a wedding! That's what it was! Oh, that's even better. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ah, bog butter. It's quite cool. Uh, Firkins Darling, such... we're going to be worse. We're going to be at a wedding, you're going to be like, Honey, you're eating butter. I'm going to be like, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know this and I love you. <laughs> you really 
don't gotta do that though. <laughs> well, what makes you think it's a matter of I gotta? Oh, I know. It's a matter of you wanna. <laughs> There's a reason I asked to be on this stream. <laughs> I need a drink of water! That's probably a good idea. <sighs> Firkins of such buried butter are a common archaeological find in Ireland. The National Museum of Ireland Archaeology has some containing, quote, a grayish cheese-like substance, partially hardened, and not much like butter, and quite free from putrefaction. It's quite free. <laughs> I can watch Lord of the Rings now so I can enjoy Gandalf going It's quite cool. And work it into like anything I can say. <laughs> <laughs> the practice was most common in Ireland in the 11th to 14th centuries. It ended entirely before the 19th century. Rip to those bog butters. It's quite buttery. Industrialization. Like Ireland, France became well known for its butter particularly in Normandy and Brittany. Gandalf, when he sees a watery oat-based slop... It's quite gruel. Yes, you're correct. Thank you. Thank you for that. I could just do a whole Gandalf stream where I just said things like that. I won't, but I could. <laughs> Tuned. <laughs> Don't make promises like that for me! <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Holly could decide what bit stream she wants to do all of herself. <laughs> Although... I have to think about oh, no. it now. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Love for a stream where Holly just says stuff in different voices? I have wonderful news for you, Stardeck. That is technically literally every stream I've ever done. I was gonna say, welcome! You're in the right place! <laughs> ah, butter consumption in London in the mid-1840s was estimated at 15,357 tons annually. Until the 19th century, the vast majority of butter was made by hand, on farms. Uh, the first butter factories appeared in the United States in the early 1860s, after the successful introduction of cheese factories a decade earlier. Uh, in late 1870s, the centrifugal cream separator... Centrifugal? Centrifugal? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, doesn't matter. Centrifuges. Centrifugine. Cent <laughs> S you got it. S spin. 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 Holly should be a voice actress. I have further wonderful news for you on that topic. <laughs> uh, where was I? I'm reading about butter. The centrifugal cream separator was introduced, marketed most successfully by Swedish engineer Carl Gustav Patrick de Laval. Thank you, Briamina, for that resub. Much appreciated. Carl Gustav Patrick de Laval. Gustav de Laval. Gustav de Laval. Gustav de Laval. Gustav. Gustav de Laval. Gustav de Laval. Was a Swedish engineer and inventor who made important contributions to the de design of steam turbines and centrifugal separation machinery for dairy. Two great fucking things to have been known for. Like, all right, I'm out here. I am like revolutionizing steam turbines. You know, that's cool as fuck. That's cool as fuck, Mister Gustave de Laval. That's great that you did that. Are you gonna, you know, rest on your laurels and retire now? No, motherfucker. I'm gonna make dairy machine. <laughs> Great work, Mr. Gustave de Laval. We're all so thankful for what you've done. Gustave de Laval's centrifugal cream separator sped up the butter making process. That's so cool how he made a machine that looks exactly like himself. <laughs> <laughs> you pop the head open like a Pez dispenser and you put the you put the cream in and butter comes out somewhere. <laughs> Love Holly seeing a voice clip and thinking, shit, shit, what's a bit for this? You think this is a bit? You think I don't just appreciate the contributions that Gustave de Laval has made to the world? For shame. You are right, though. <laughs> you are right, however. <laughs> 
because it sounds like a very... Something about the very specific inflection makes me think of just like... Learning a new language books on tape I used to listen to back in the day when books on tape were a thing. Uh-huh. A little bit, huh? In 1920, Otto Hunziker authored The Butter Industry, prepared for factory, school, and laboratory. A well-known text in the industry that enjoyed at least three editions. Otto Frederick Hunziker uh, was a pioneer in the American international dairy industry as both an educator and technical innovator. Born and raised in Switzerland, emigrated to the U.S. and studied at Cornell University. I can't believe he's not butter. Alright, this is gonna be on the test, everyone. Taking all those pixels. It does look a little bit like the shit face emoticon, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is butter. <laughs> this is butter. Finally! I finally understand, after all these years, what people fucking mean when they say butterface. <laughs> At long last! Finally! Anyways, we were looking at butter. As part of the efforts of the American Dairy Science Association, uh, ADSA is a non-profit professional organization for the advancement of dairy silence. Silence? Science. Headquartered in Champaign, Illinois. The headquarters of Champaign around the world. And dairy science. And dairy uh, silence. And Shh. dairy silence. Buy my dairy silence. Permanently. For $3,000, I will stop. That's what we should have set the stream goal to. $3,000 to end immediately. <laughs> so I should do that for every stream I do. <laughs> <laughs> I know once Socks had a goal. Thank you, Spoonie Plays, for the raid. I hope you had a wonderful stream today. I know one time they had a fucking goal that was like, we need to buy the rights to Alvin and the Chipmunks. And it was like several million dollars. <laughs> it didn't That's get met. <laughs> what? To, to no one's surprise, it didn't get met. <laughs> Wait, Holly, you what? Wait, Holly, I what? I'm, I'm saying what? What? I don't understand why people are like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> we don't have the rights to Alvin and the Chipmunks? I mean, I don't. I don't fucking got them. Someone's got them, we just don't know who. Not me. It might be Gustave de Laval. But it's not me. <laughs> Great job, darling. <laughs> Thanks. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Professor Hunziker and others published articles regarding causes of tallowness, an odor defect distinct from rancidity, a taste defect. Mottles, an aesthetic issue related to uneven color. Introduced salts, the impact of creamery metals and liquids, and acidity measurement. Uh, these and other ADSA publications help standardize practices internationally. The chipmunks also do not have the rights to themselves. It's like a Britney Spears and her dad situation. That's deeply fucked. We gotta That's do something for Alvin and the chipmunks. <laughs> for only $10 million, we can help them. <laughs> Send it directly to these unmarked coordinates uh, in Switzerland. Let's go. Do not bring weapons. Butter also provided extra income to farm families. Uh, they used wood presses with carved decoration to press butter into pucks or small bricks. Ingots. They made butter ingots. They forged butter ingots. Thank you, Shanghai Omai, for the 28 month resub. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Good fucking message from Log. We need to create a David Cross in a lab to buy the rights to Alvin and his monks. <laughs> Thank you for that one. Good work. Oh, we're learning all about butter's Effie's house. Thank you for the bits. Where was I? Right, uh, butter ingots. They forged uh, really strong butter ingots uh, to sell at nearby markets or general stores. 
The decoration identified the farm that produced the butter. The practice continued until production was mechanized, and butter was produced in less decorative stick form. Buttered consumption declined in most Western nations during the 20th century, mainly because of the rising population of margarine, which is less expensive and, until recent years, was perceived as being healthier. Margarine. Margarine. Gustave Margarine. Gustave de Laval. Margarine. Is a spread used for flavoring, uh, baking, and cooking. Most often used as a substitute for butter. Originally made from animal fats, most margarine consumed today is made from vegetable oil. The spread was originally named oleo margarine from Latin for oleum, olive oil, and Greek margarite, pearl indicating luster. The name was later shortened to margarine. It can be referred to colloquially as marge. In the United States, margarine consumption overtook butter during the 50s, and it's still the case today uh, that more margarine than butter is eaten in the United States and European Union. Who is Marge? Gustave de Laval. Gustave de Laval. Not him. Not fucking He's Gustave him. Gustave de Laval. Not him. Is that still the case? Uh, possibly, presumably, at least as of um, this chart archived 2005. So at least as of 2005, this was the case. <laughs> it is still the case today, as of 2005. <laughs> Just, you know, a few years ago. One or two. Just a little bit ago. <laughs> Think you would need to give Holly another $1,000 on the stream to get her to do the Marge Simpson voice? Listen, this is going to be a long one. This is a marathon, not a sprint. If I was doing a Marge Simpson voice on this, I would not be able to talk for a fucking week. <laughs> Worldwide production. In 1997, India produced 1,470,000 metric tons, or uh, 1,620,000 short tons of butter, most of which was consumed domestically. Second in production was the United States, uh, 522,000 tons, or 575,000 short tons, followed by France, 466,000 tons, 514,000 short tons, Germany, 442,000 tons, or 487,000 short tons, uh, and New Zealand, 307,000 tons or 338,000 short tons. France ranks first in per capita butter consumption, with 8 kilograms per capita per year. It, that doesn't surprise me that much, actually. Uh, in terms of absolute consumption, absolute consumption sounds like <laughs> someone's ultimate move in like a MOBA or something. Uh, Germany was second after India, using 578,000 metric tons, 637,000 short tons of butter in 1997, followed by France, 528,000 tea, 582,000 short tea, Russia, 514,000 tea, and the United States, 505,000 tea. New Zealand, Australia, and Ukraine are among the few nations that export a significant percentage of the butter they produce. Different varieties are found around the world. Smen is a spiced Moroccan clarified butter, buried in the ground and aged for months or years. Uh, smen, from Arabic, as written here, which I could not pronounce, uh, also pronounced called smen, sem, semne, or smin, is a salted fermented butter and a traditional Yemeni dish. In Yemen, Yemenis per prepare a special version of it which is smoked with aromatic herbs inside of a gourd in order to impart deeper flavor and aid in preservation. That sounds good. Short tons are 2,000 pounds. Interesting. A similar product is Maltash of the Hunza Valley. The Hunza Valley is a mountainous valley in the northern part of uh, Gilgit... Baltiz, B Baltistan region of Pakistan, formed by the Hunza River, uh, bordering Ishkoman to the northwest, uh, Shigar to the southeast, Afghanistan's Wakhan Corridor to the north, 
uh, and the Xinjiang region of China to the northeast. I apologize for mispronouncing probably all of those. <laughs> Uh, where cow and yak butter can be buried for decades, and use that events such as weddings. Yak butter is a specialty in Tibet. Uh, tsampa, barley flour mixed with yak butter, is a staple food. Butter tea is consumed in the Himalayan regions of Tibet, Bhutan, Nepal, and India. It consists of tea served with intensely flavored, or rancid, yak butter and salt. In African and Asian developing nations, butter is traditionally made from sour milk rather than cream. It can take several hours of churning to produce workable butter grains from fermented milk. I need to take a break. <laughs> yeah. I need to spend a little bit of time not talking, so I need to get up and have a stretch. <laughs> I'm going to get up. I'm going to have a stretch then. I'm going to, you know, refill my water and all that. When we get back. Storage. See you in a couple minutes. Gustav de Laval.
Hello. Hello. Welcome back to myself, I guess, and also to Puzz. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. Hi. Uh, before we keep going, I just want to say uh, thank y'all very much for all the subs and all the tips and all the bits tonight. It is, you know, very much appreciated. Um, nothing really major or nothing in terms of, like, me setting up a goal. It's just, like, uh, I haven't been able to stream terribly much uh, this month and, like, the end of last month. And, well, bills are always bills. Um, so, uh, I figured I would just put up a goal for a, for a possibility of maybe I'd do something else I was thinking of doing a little sooner. Um, even if we don't make it, I'm still gonna do whatever pastries is eventually. Uh, but I just want to say, you know, thank y'all very much. I do very much appreciate, uh, your support. Uh, thanks for liking the streams enough to help keep the lights on and all that. Yeah. Let's get back to it then, shall we? We continue with storage. Normal butter softens to a spreadable consistency around 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as refrigerator temperatures. Management would like to know who poured butter into the mule. Literally everyone in chat using the butter command. <laughs> <laughs> All of you did that! You jammed up poor Molly's insides with butter. <laughs> I hope you're proud of yourselves. <laughs> Thank you, Oracle Milkman! Giving a gift sub to Theme Battle. The, quote, butter compartment. <laughs> I don't know why butter compartment is so fucking funny to me! <laughs> it's, it's literally a thing I've seen in so many fridges! Why is this taking me out? <laughs> the butter, butter compartment. compartment. <laughs> Found in many refrigerators. Maybe one of the warmer sections inside, but it still leaves butter. Quite hard. Until recently, many refrigerators sold in New Zealand featured a... Butter conditioner. A compartment kept warm. Okay, now that one's getting me. <laughs> what is a butter conditioner? It conditions your butter. <laughs> you know, you put it in the tips of your butter for a little bit, then you rinse it out, and it helps keep your butter silky smooth and healthy. <laughs> oh yeah! Like that! Just like that, exactly like that. A compartment kept warmer than the rest of the refrigerator, but still cooler than room temperature, with a small heater. Keeping butter tightly wrapped delays rancidity, which is hastened by exposure to light or air, and also helps prevent it from picking up... Other odors. I looked away for a second and literally lost where my line was. Um, there it is, found it. Wrapped butter has a shelf life of several months at refrigerator temperatures. Butter can also be frozen to further extend its storage life. Packaging. United States! 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 Super! In the United States, butter has traditionally been made into small rectangular blocks by means of a pair of wooden butt paddles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but butt paddles. <laughs> you and I. Yeah. <laughs> That's the end of my sentence. I hope you liked it. Uh huh. I liked it a whole lot, but <laughs> good. <laughs> Thanks for that one. Usually produced in four ounce, one quarter pound, one hundred and ten gram sticks, individually wrapped in waxed or foiled paper and sold as a one-pound package of four sticks. Zombie Wang for the reset. 
This practice is believed to have originated in 1907, when Swift and company began packaging butter in this manner for mass distribution. What does this have to do with Taylor Swift? I don't care. Due to historical differences in butter printers, machines that cut and package butter, machines that pr produce butter from nothing. <laughs> Thank you for the tip, I appreciate it. <laughs> My butter printer is always printing butter when I least expect it. Four I hate it when that happens. Literally all over the floor. Clean that shit up. Four ounce sticks are commonly produced in two different shapes. The dominant shape east of the Rocky Mountains is the Elgin, or Eastern Pack Shape, named for a dairy uh, in Elgin, Illinois. The sticks measure four by three quarters by one and one quarter by one and one quarter inches, 121 millimeters by 32 by 32. Typically sold stacked two by two in elongated cube shaped boxes. West of the Rocky Mountains, Butter printers standardized on a different shape that is now referred to as the Western Pack Shape. These butter sticks measure three and a quarter by one and a half by one and a half inches, 83 by 38 by 38 millimeters, and are usually sold with four sticks packed side by side in a flat rectangular box. Most butter dishes are designed for Elgin style butter sticks. Elsewhere. Elsewhere. Outside the United States, butter is measured for sale by mass. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Bulk packaging. Bulk packaging. Since the 1940s. More commonly in the 1960s. Butter pats have been individually wrapped and packed in cardboard boxes. Prior to use of cardboard, butter was bulk packed in wood. The earliest discoveries used... Oh, this doesn't have the sound clip on here. Damn it! Come on! <laughs> the earliest discovered used fuckins. <laughs> From about 1882, wooden boxes were used as the introduction of refrigeration on ships brought about longer transit times. Butter boxes were generally made with wood whose resin would not taint the butter, such as sycamore, uh, kahikati, uh, also known as white pine, it is endemic to New Zealand, hoop pine, maple, or spruce. They commonly weighed a firkin. <laughs> There's a firkin of measurement of weight now, too? <laughs> 56 pounds. <laughs> Girl, you'd best be carrying 56 pounds or 25 kilograms if you think we firkin tonight. Oh, you know I am. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Yeah? Yeah, kitty? <laughs> Did your cat like that or something? She just woke up and made a noise at me. <laughs> oh, she didn't like that furkin' joke. Everyone's a fucking critic. <laughs> you can tell the jokes now if you want, kitty. <laughs> Here, I'll give you my headset. You're, you're the goofs now. Cat's on stream now. Cat's on stream now. <laughs> she just gave my headset such an icy stare. <laughs> awesome. I heard like a very quiet like honk. <laughs> I think that was me. <laughs> Everyone in chat also thought it was the meowing. <laughs> well, thank you for honking on mic, honey. I love you. I was shouting you make the jokes. Apparently that registered as a honk. It was just a very quiet honk. <laughs> In cooking and gastronomy, butter has been considered indispensable in French cuisine since the 17th century. Chefs and cooks have extolled its importance. Fernand Point said, Donnez-moi du beurre, encore du beurre, toujours du beurre. Uh, basically, give me butter, more butter, still more butter. Fernand Point uh, was a French chef and restaurateur, considered to be the father of modern French cuisine. He founded the restaurant The Pyramid. <laughs> this isn't even a fucking pyramid. I want my money back. I don't care about this guy anymore. <laughs> Julia Child said, With enough butter, anything's good. 
Julia Carolyn Child, uh, born McWilliams, uh, was an American cooking teacher, author, and television personality, recognized for bringing French cuisine to the American public with her debut cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, and her subsequent television programs, the most notable of which was The French Chef, which premiered in 1963. Thank you, sign for the 29 tons of butter right on my doorstep! 29 tons. Hooray! Much appreciated. Any quote from Paula Dean? I sure fucking hope not. <laughs> If there is, we leave. Yeah, we can just do that. Just walk oh. out. Just walk out. You can leave. Butter Wikipedia article. Butter Wikipedia article. Butter Wikipedia article. Butter Wikipedia article if you're quick. Yeah, Julia Child's fucking great. I need to, like, sit down someday and just, like, read more of her stuff. Oh, Holly, I, I got something to talk to you about uh, off stream. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> I hope I remember to hit you up about that. <laughs> I hope so. I also just remembered that there was something I was going to talk to you about after last stream that I also forgot about. So Fuck! now I have two things to talk to you about. I forgot about that too! <laughs> oh, we could do that later. <laughs> we got butter to go through. Melted butter plays an important role in the preparation of sauces, notably in French cuisine. Beurre noisette, or hazelnut butter, and beurre noir, black butter, are sauces of melted butter cooked until milk solids and sugars have turned golden or dark brown. They're often finished with additions of vinegar or lemon juice. Beurre noisette is a type of warm sauce used in French cuisine. It can accompany savory foods such as winter vegetables, pasta, fish, omelets, and chicken. Become a popular ingredient in other cultures as well, such as in contemporary American-Italian cuisine, or the traditional American chocolate chip cookie. It is good as fuck in uh, chocolate chip cookies. Mm. If baking is science, I think cooking women on TV, TV count as ladies in STEM. Yeah, it's close enough that I accept it. <laughs> That's how I'm involved in STEM. Let's go. That's how I'm technically still involved in STEM to this day. <laughs> I mean, you also kind of know computers. I mean, yeah, but I don't really do that actively <laughs> anymore, except as like hobby stuff. And in trying to solve my various computer curses, so I think that counts. You know, I guess just by nature of, like, the horrible aura that, like, a witch placed on you as a child, I am just kind of your personal IT woman, aren't I? <laughs> and I'm so, so fucking grateful every day. I love you. <laughs> I love you. It is widely used in making French pastry. It has a deep yellow, almost brown color, and a nutty scent and flavor from the heating process. Uh, it's not got any actual hazelnut in it. It's just brown butter. It's just browned butter. And beurre noir. Thank you, Andromeda, the for the 1569. Also funny humber. <laughs> just thank you for the funny humber. <laughs> beurre noir is melted butter that is cooked over low heat until the milk solids turn a very dark brown. As soon as this happens, acid is carefully added to the hot butter. Usually lemon juice or a type of vinegar. Some recipes also add a sprig of parsley, which is removed from the hot butter before the acid is added. Typically served with eggs, fish, or certain types of vegetables. Here we can see Roshen in Schwarzer butter. I'm assuming Schwarzer butter is just like, uh, German for black butter. I gotta admit, this does look good. They got these little... I think those are like capers on here, or something. Yeah, that sounds right. Hell yeah. And they got. I I, I think these are potatoes. I think these they are look potatoes. Potato. They they look funny potatoes. I was gonna say they, they look like a nice like boiled golden potato. Mm -hmm. Schwarzer butter is a little bit of a Gundam ass name, isn't it? <laughs> Can't wait for the next <laughs> Gundam model. <laughs> You get the fucking gunpla kit, and all the things fall out of like the plastic sprues because they're all greased up. <laughs> also, thank you for that subbing in six months in advance. Much appreciated. Where was I? Where was I? Right, I was talking about the butters. The butters. The butters. Butters. Which, which I mean is the whole fucking article, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Hollandaise and Bernier sauces are emulsions of egg yolk and melted butter. Hollandaise sauce, formerly also called Dutch sauce, is a mixture of egg yolk, melted butter, and lemon juice, or a white wine or vinegar reduction. 
usually seasoned with salt, either white pepper or cayenne pepper. It looks like this. You ever seen this stuff on top of a meal? That's what you, that's what it, that's what you saw. It was hollandaise sauce. Looks exactly like this. Take a big old bite. Yum yummy. And uh, Bernier's sauce, uh, or or Ber Bernier's sauce, I guess more accurately, not Bernier's. It's not got a little funny thing over it. Sauce made of clarified butter, emulsified in egg yolks, and white wine vinegar flavored with herbs. Herbs, herbs. Widely regarded as the child of Hollandaise sauce. Damn, Hollandaise got it on. Good for them. Good for them, I think. The difference is only in the flavoring. Uh, Bernays uses shallot, uh, chervil, peppercorns, and tarragon in a reduction of vinegar and lime. Hollandaise is made of a reduction of lemon juice or white wine vinegar, with white peppercorns and a pinch of cayenne instead of the above seasonings. Cream of mushroom. Hollandaise and Bernays sauces are stabilized with the powerful emulsifiers in the egg yolks, but butter itself contains enough emulsifiers, mostly remnants of the fat globule membranes, to form a stable emulsion on its own. Have you ever had Hollandaise sauce, Puzz? I must have. I, it, it sounds familiar. I'm pretty sure I have. I can't tell you where is the thing. I've literally never had it in my life. Like, the, the thing most people have it with is, like, uh... Eggs Benedict, but that's like yeah. that's not oh, a thing actually, you can have because that's got ham on it. Probably haven't had it because because of the egg thing, right? Yeah, also the whole egg thing too. That's true. That's true. Like I was I was about to say I'd be surprised if you had it because it's like really fucking rich because it's got egg yolk in it. Yeah, and, and also now butter. That this would probably kill me. <laughs> this, this this is food that would explode you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'd be crass for just a moment on stream. You know what? With all the fucking body jokes I've been making, you're allowed. I, I think eating this would sprat me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> You're right, but no! <laughs> the mix of people who understand the people who absolutely do not is beautiful. <laughs> I'm looking so sweetly at the camera and smiling. You should play Return of the Oberdin and or watch my streams I did of Return of the Oberdin. <laughs> Literally do it. That, that's what I go back to and like re-listen to every off so often. Could I define the word not without spoiling Return of the Oberdin? <laughs> so no. <laughs> Imagine someone, like, telling a fucking word to you, like, on par with, like, oh, fucking Gregory Barry coned it or whatever, and you're like, what does that mean? They're just like, I'm sorry, dude, I can't tell you. That's spoilers for Outer Wilds. Verre <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blanc, or white butter, is made by whisking butter into reduced vinegar or wine, forming an emulsion with the texture of thick cream. Verre Monté, prepared butter, is melted but still emulsified butter. Lends its name to the practice of mounting a sauce with butter. Whisking cold butter into any water-based sauce at the end of cooking. Giving the sauce a thicker body and a glossy shine. As well as a buttery taste. This is swimming in it. This is... Take it a bath! They, they seared this yellowfin tuna and then they like just put it in the pool to swim. <laughs> Wait, a Berre Blanc flavored with chocolate and wasabi. Holy shit. Huh. That's interesting. Butter? I, I don't think... It sounds like it'd be good, question mark. Like, like in theory, those flavors work together. You, you got, like, chocolate and spice in, like, small amount. But, but even knowing that on a logical level it works... This still makes me go, huh. Right, yeah, like, butter, vinegar, white wine, shallots, chocolate, wasabi, served with fish. It, it's a combination of flavors, just at least. 
I would try it. I will say, but... <laughs> I'm not sure how much of that is, well, it's important to expand your culinary horizons, and how much of that is, what the fuck? <laughs> Both? <laughs> I would try it. Maybe I a trick chocolate lunch. like mole? It maybe. But the the way they just put chocolate here in my head, that could mean anything from like, oh, you know, they use like uh like like cocoa to they use like a really, really dark chocolate to you want milk chocolate, butter, wine, and wasabi? He we put a whole go. Hershey's bar in here. Hershey's barf, more like it. Got him. Hey, got him. <laughs> and then we have Beer Monte, uh, pictured here. Gustave de Laval. good message, Doc. <laughs> for, for those of you that might see the message saying, I've drunk Kirby's piss in the past 28 hours, I would try it. And you're looking at them going, what the fuck does that mean? Number one, go follow Doc on Twitch. Number two, <laughs> really, really good stream he did the other day. Um, I think literally yesterday, but I'm bad at time. Um, where he tried a whole bunch of different uh, Mountain Dew <laughs> cocktails. <laughs> ah. And then made that sounds a, awful. And Congratulations. Then made a, and then made a tier list of them. <laughs> Two of the standouts that I remember so vividly were Kirby's Piss, immediately followed by L. Kirby's Piss. <laughs> That is El Kirby's piss. El <laughs> Kirby's piss is tequila and Mountain Dew Major Melon, by the way. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> oh, thank you for the resub. <laughs> smile. Anyways, butter. Anyways, butter. Butter is used for sautéing and frying, although its milk solids brown and burn above 150 degrees Celsius or 250 Fahrenheit, a rather low temperature for most applications. The smoke point of butter fat is around 200 Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit. It's a clarified butter or ghee is better suited to frying. Butter fills several roles in baking. Baking is a method of preparing, preparing food that uses dry heat, typically in an oven, but can also be done on hot ashes or on hot stones. The most common baked item is bread, but many other types of foods can be baked. Such as pastries. Smile. Uh, Please look forward. Butter fills several roles in baking, where it is used in a similar manner as other solid fats like lard, suet, or shortening, but has a flavor that may, be better comp that may better complement sweet baked goods, such as pastries. Smile. <laughs> Wish you knew what any of the shit he was drinking tasted like so you could understand how that would be in theory. Here's the funny thing about that stream. I know, like, a little bit about, like, how different alcohols taste. I've, you know, I've dabbled, I've sampled. I've never had any kind of Mountain Dew in my fucking life, so I have no frame of reference for any of that. I just don't drink soda. <laughs> Pro butter history. Deep frying in a shitload of clarified butter has been the primary way of deep frying in Europe up until 1920. Huh. Interesting. Hidden. Mountain Dew is boring as fuck is a really good message in general, and I'm so mad that I don't have the ability to pin messages in my chat right now. I love doing that in Balp's chat. I just want to pin Mountain Dew is boring as fuck for everyone to look at. <laughs> <laughs> what a message. By the way, Western Pack shaped unsalted butter. And Eastern Pack shaped salted butter. These are the butter ingots. <laughs> Thank you for giving that gift about to Game Off on. It's real generous of you. Uh, here we have uh, mixing melted butter with chocolate to make a brownie. That's the uh, two ingredients of a brownie melted butter and chocolate. Mix those up, put them in your oven. 
I'm not responsible for what comes out, so maybe don't All do right, that, actually. Can... No! <laughs> Listen, I do have butter. I do have chocolate. I could do this. I could make this mistake. Paz! You said you wanted to bake good things! That's true. That's true. I'm, I'm gonna try making a fucking... What do they call it? Hang on a second, the music it's... stopped. Where'd the music go? I I tabbed over to YouTube and it's giving me the error. Video paused. Would you like to continue watching? Oh yeah, it does what? that if you leave it open for too long, just because it assumes that I don't know you've died or something. No, I'm reading about butter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've got a recipe that's a combination of a babka and a kala bread, so I'm gonna try making that at Ooh. some point this week. Hell yeah. Hollandaise sauce served over white asparagus and potatoes. Oh, huh. Yeah, it would go good with vegetables, I guess, wouldn't it? Oh, Based that's asparagus. I was just looking at the bottom. I was like, fries? No, 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 no. White asparagus has this sort of like, uh, I think the way I would describe the sort of look and like visual texture of white asparagus is unpleasant, especially if it's been like kind of blanched like this. It looks... It looks like pale mush that, like, you would be served in a suburban white American home. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> but I think, um... I've never actually had white asparagus, but I've heard it's pretty good, so... <laughs> it's not like this, maybe. A another case of I wish I could fucking <laughs> pin messages. Rotten Witch in chat saying my white meal. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate covered salmon? Uh, I don't know. I think salmon can go pretty good with, um, like sweet, like, you know, glazes and things like that. Like, I like a nice salmon with, like, a maple glaze or something like that. I don't know if chocolate would work for me specifically. I would maybe try it, but, <laughs> you know, that's out of curiosity. Probably would try a lot of things, is the problem. Listen. I would try a lot of foods at least once. Uh, ooh, thank you for that. I will click on that uh, doc and I will make a note of that for later and keep that until I, you know, fucking transfer everything over to Firefox finally. Which I still oh, need I to do. do at some point. Mm -hmm. Why not just use nacho cheese here? Nacho cheese and hollandaise sauce have very different tastes, I think. I think. Yeah, what, one of those is rich egg sauce, and the other one is nacho cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Nutritional information! As butter is essentially just the milk fat, it contains only traces of lactose, so moderate consumption of butter is not a problem for lactose intolerant people. People with milk allergies may still need to avoid butter which contains enough of the allergy-causing proteins to cause reactions. Whole milk, butter, and cream have high levels of saturated fat. A saturated fat is a type of fat in which the fatty acid chains evolve single bonds. A fat known as a glyceride is made of two kinds of smaller molecules, a short glycerol backbone and fatty acid, that each contain a long linear or branched chain of carbon atoms. Along the chain, some carbon atoms are linked by single bonds, CC, and others are linked by double bonds. C double bond C. A double bond along the carbon chain can react with a pair of hydrogen atoms to change into a single uh, C, C bond with each H atom now bonded to one of the two C atoms. Glyceride fats without any carbon chain double bonds are called saturated because they are, quote, saturated with hydrogen atoms, having no double bonds available to react with more hydrogen. Most animals are saturated. Most. Butter. What? Total fat, 80 to 88 grams, uh, per 100 grams, specifically. Uh, 43 to 48 grams of saturated fat, 15 to 19 grams of monounsaturated fat, 2 to 3 grams of polyunsaturated fat, uh, and 150 degrees Celsius grams of smoke point fat. That is, uh, 302 degrees Fahrenheit grams for Americans out there. I should say United States of Americans, rather than, you know, people living in the Americas. Uh, there's a few Americas. There's a couple of them, at least two. Maybe more. Imagine. Dep depending on whether or not you consider Central America to be a uh, 
distinct body from North and South America, but I know not enough of the politics of that region to really say anything along those lines. Also consider canola oil, coconut oil, corn oil, lard, peanut oil, olive oil, rice bran oil, soybean oil, suet, ghee, sunflower. It's interesting that ghee is just at the bottom here and not like, you know, at the top with butter. Hungry for knowledge. Yeah, huh. Thank you, January, for the $20 tip. We have reached the goal for pastries. Hooray! Sometime in the near future. You saturated fun for the 837. Sometime in the near future. Please look forward to all pastries. Every single one. All pastries. I had an idea for a second goal, and I was like, oh, maybe if we meet this goal, I can set that up. I've already forgotten what it was, so... <laughs> Anything else we get, I just will say thank you very much. Um, can I set an evil goal, Holly? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what... What amount would you like to set the evil goal at? I'll give you that. I don't know what the goal is! <laughs> okay, how about, how about, how about... Hmm. Do I set it low so we have a chance of achieving, or high so that we have a chance of not achieving it? <laughs> I love you and I trust your judgment. Uh, let's set it a little high, just for fun. Okay. If we hit 400 today... I will go and get. There, there's only a little bit left in in my butter dish. There's like a little pat of butter. What I will mean? go and just eat it straight. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> just a little pat in the speed of butter stream. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I'm 100 percent sure. It's not a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot of butter. If it was a lot of butter, I would be reasonable. Okay, well, if you want to enable my girlfriend to do a food crime... <laughs> I guess that's there. <laughs> For $90, I will do a crime. Health concerns. <laughs> Good segue! <laughs> a 2015 study concluded that hypercholesterolemic people should keep their consumption of butter to a minimum. Whereas moderate butter intake may be considered part of the diet in the non- or the normal cholester- co cholesterolemic- normal cholesterolemic population. Fuck, that sure is a word, huh? It sure as fuck is. A meta-analysis and systematic review published in 2016 found relatively small or insignificant overall associations of a dose of 14 grams per day of butter with mortality and CVD, cock and vol torture, I guess, and consumption was inversely associated with incidence of diabetes. The study further states that, quote, findings do not support a need for major emphasis in dietary guidelines on either increasing or decreasing butter consumption. Thank you, Ebi Maru, for the tip. <laughs> well, now you all obviously must have a delicious lunch. A delicious <laughs> lunch. Me. <laughs> Thank you. See also. List of butter dishes. List of dairy products. List of butter sauces. List of spreads. List of butter dishes from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This is a list of notable butter dishes and foods in which butter is used as a primary ingredient or as a significant component of a dish or a food. Thank you, Digitamer Riley, for the raid. Much appreciated. Read list of sandwiches articles, please? I have literally already did that. That was a stream I already did. I already have gone what through. You, you close twitch.com. You open youtube.com. You look up Holotones VODs. You look for a sandwich stream VOD. You hit play. 
There you go. You can go on my my VOD's channel right now and you can watch all sandwiches. That was the first one of these streams I did. <laughs> Please enjoy. <laughs> I'm not doing it again. <sighs> butter is a dairy product that consists of butter fat, milk proteins, and water. It is made by churning fresh or fermented cream or milk. I said thank you for the raid already, I think, right? Thank you, Digitame and Riley, for the raid. I hope you had a wonderful stream. The Indian dish butter chicken is rich in butter and cream. Butter dishes and foods. This is a dynamic list and may never be able to satisfy particular standards for completeness. You can help by adding missing items with reliable sources. Well, that's 50 bucks. All right, well, pause. <laughs> you wanted <I'm> it. <laughs> you fucking wanted this. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. Thank you so much. Again, I'd like to mention when I do these streams I, with, with pause, I do like to give her half the tips. So thank you very much for giving me and my girlfriend each 200 bucks. And also letting her eat butter, I guess, which she could have done whenever she wanted to, but... <laughs> yeah, but now I get paid for it. This you know, is entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> that's true. Wait, that was 80 bucks. Sorry. That wasn't 50. Jesus that was 80. <laughs> Thank you. My God. Someone really wanted me to eat butter. I do have the butter. My cat is staring at me. She also thinks this is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Kiki just wants some of the butter. That's also possible. All right. Should I wait for right. you to eat your butter? Oh, I've started. <laughs> Let's go, I guess. <laughs> I'm at least being dignified. I got a fork to eat it with. <laughs> You're eating butter with a fork? Well, yeah, I'm not a fucking barbarian. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, this is the woman of my dreams. <laughs> She's dating me on purpose. Yippee! <laughs> this was a fucking mistake. <laughs> uh -huh. I wonder why you might feel that way about the eating butter with a fork. I mean, I committed, so I'm gonna do it. You can stop if you want. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I'm almost done. Okay. <laughs> Incomplete lists. Because of Wikipedia's role as an almanac and as a gazetteer, as well as an encyclopedia, it contains a large number of lists. Some lists, such as the list of US state birds, are typically complete and unlikely to change for a long time. Unless new birds appear, I guess. Some lists, however, cannot be considered complete or even representative of the class of items being listed. Such lists should be immediately preceded by the incomplete list template or one of its topic-specific variations. Other lists, such as list of numbers? <laughs> no, this is not a rabbit hole I can go down tonight. Some other time, perhaps. Other lists, such as list of numbers, may never be fully complete, or may require constant updates to remain current. <laughs> These are known as dynamic lists and should be preceded by the dynamic list template. It is our hope that other Wikipedians will pick up where we leave off and add more items to the list, bringing it closer, if not to completion, then at least to a mature state in which only minor updates are required as times change. Of course, it's not clear for all lists what should or shouldn't be on it, and so completion may never be clear for these lists. But there should at least come a point where the most representative and widely agreed upon entries are present. <laughs> Thank you for the $20! Number. We have reached 420! Nice. nice, nice, nice. Sometimes they put weed in butter, I'm told. Have well, you mine doesn't have weed in it, just salt. I did at least eat salted butter. I didn't just eat straight butter. <laughs> at least you have standards when it comes to eating butter. 
One time when my I shouldn't have fucking done that. And yet, I have no regrets. So, give us your review. Review. Bad. Uh huh. <laughs> well, I would do it again. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Doesn't butter already have salt? I mean, there's salt in unsalted butter varieties. Uh, traditionally, you know, salt was added to butter as like a preservative to help it uh, not go rancid. But now that, you know, we have better refrigeration that's easier and more portable, we can have that throughout the entire production sequence. So, uh, the salt is no longer really needed for preservation. Uh, and now it's mostly just, you know, for flavor, for added taste. Typically, when you're doing cooking or baking or stuff like that, for the most part, you use unsalted butter. Because that way, then you can add your own salts, like adjust for taste and things like that. Salted so it butter doesn't is get over salted. Right, yeah. Salted butter is eaten butter. Salted butter is like butter you put on, like, bread and stuff. Yeah, I, I have both because I've been doing some baking, so so I have a thing of salted butter and a thing of unsalted butter. Butter tarts are a Canadian thing? We'll get to that. Smile. <laughs> Don't worry. There's still time to get into butter tarts. Ebi Maru in chat says, Did used to eat whipped butter as a snack. Why whipped, can I ask? <laughs> I imagine, you know, just better texture, a little little lighter, a little more aerated. I just ate a fucking stick of butter, and I can say, I wish it was whipped. <laughs> Parchiaki in chat asking, is melted butter technically a soup? I don't fucking care about technicality. If you're eating that shit and genuinely believe you're eating a soup, more power to ya. Butter is butter. I don't care what else you want to call it, it can be whatever you want it to be. Butter dishes and foods. Beurre blanc. Back to this one. So here's the thing about this list. And this is why I said this is a marathon, not a sprint. This list, as you might be able to see, is not like all the other um, list of foods that I've done on these streams. It's just a lot of links to different articles. As such... I will be clicking on each article and reading through each one. Uh, unless I decide one is too fucking long and I just don't care anymore. But that is what I am striving for, is I will read the articles. Welcome. You have successfully graduated from the prologue of Butterstream. Now it's time for the real shit. Beurre Blanc, white butter in French, is a warm emulsified butter sauce made with a reduction of vinegar and or white wine. Normally, uh, muscadet, muscadet, I don't know, uh, and shallots, into which softened whole butter is whisked off into the heat to prevent separation. Uh, everyone say thank you to Puzz for eating butter. You have to fucking just... <laughs> Thank you for giving us $400. You now have to thank my girlfriend for doing the thing that no one asked her to do. Ooh, they want me to eat butter so bad. No, no, no. <laughs> I to keep it away from you like you're a naughty cat. <laughs> my naughty cat is being better about the butter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> whisked off in the heat to prevent separation. <laughs> the small amount of emulsifiers naturally found in butter are used to form an oil and water emulsion. Although similar to hollandaise in concept, it is considered neither a classic leading nor compound sauce. The sauce originates in Loire Valley cuisine. <sighs> the chef Clémence Lefeuvre, uh, née Clémence Pro invented Beurre Blanc, apparently by accident, sometime around the beginning of the 20th century. She served this sauce at her restaurant La Buvette de la Marine in the hamlet of uh, La Chibuette in the village of Saint-Julien de Conseil, 
on the banks of the Loire River a few kilometers upstream from Nantes. Legend holds that she intended to prepare a baronet sauce to go with pike, but forgot to add the tarragon and egg yolks. Some sources claim this invention occurred while she worked as a cook for the Marquis de Goulen at Chateau de Goulen. Uh, Aristide Briand, longtime Prime Minister of France and Nobel Peace Prize, Prize? Prize laureate, said at her death in 1932 that it, quote, was a bit like national mourning. <laughs> We are mourning the loss of a butter savant today. <laughs> Truly are. I also did, um... I did misread this, and I thought they were saying that, you know, the, the Prime Minister of France was saying at her own death that it, <laughs> it was a bit like national mourning, and I was like, what does this have to do with butter or this person who made butter? Preparation. <clears throat> A good beurre blanc is rich and buttery, with a neutral flavor that responds well to other seasonings and flavorings, thereby lending itself to the addition of herbs and spices. It should be light, yet still liquid, and thick enough to cling to food. Beurre blanc is prepared by reducing wine, vinegar, shallots, and herbs, if used until it is nearly dry. Although not necessary, cream can be added at this point as a stabilizer to the sauce. Lemon juice is sometimes used in place of vinegar, and stock can be added as well. Cold one-inch cubes of butter are then gradually incorporated into the sauce as the butter melts and the mixture is whisked. The sauce can be prepared, and the sauce can separate by either overheating or cooling. It would heat past 58 degrees Celsius, 136 Fahrenheit. Some of the emulsifying proteins begin to break down and release the butter fat they hold in emulsion. If the sauce cools below 27 degrees Fahrenheit, the butter fat will solidify. Mm. Derivatives. Beurre rouge. I don't know what that fucking voice I was doing was, but <laughs> it felt appropriate. Thing. After I saw oh, my opinion on a good beurre blanc is rich and buttery. I just felt like I had to descend into that voice. This is the voice of butter taking me over, I guess. <laughs> Butter's here. Butter's guesting on the stream. This is what butter sounds like. This is what butter does to a motherfucker. <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> beurre rouge, in English red butter, is a variant of the beurre blanc sauce that is prepared by substituting a dry red wine uh, for the white wine and red wine vinegar for the white wine vinegar. You know, you could have fooled me. I looked at this picture and saw like the kind of color and texture. I thought they were adding like meat drippings or blood or something in there. Good. Voice of the need wife guy for Professor Lee. <laughs> a little bit. He would have opinions on butter. He would have opinions on French butter sauces specifically. <laughs> Thank you, Cheshire Spy, for the resub. I'll be completely honest with you all. I was fucking shocked. That everywhere I saw people talking about this stream, literally the only time I saw someone go, Oh, so this is just going to be a Wikipedia stream, right? Was minutes before I went live. <laughs> Until then, everyone was like, What is this going to be? What is this fucking stream going to be? <laughs> I figured there were people that did, you know, assume as much, but I didn't see anyone really say it anywhere, so it was like, My god. Just got home, so what's this been? Welcome, Peregrine! You're just in time! For list of butter dishes! We're learning about butter. You did miss me eating a pad of butter straight. She did eat a pad of butter straight, and I still don't know why you did that to yourself. <laughs> For fun! <laughs> See also beurre monté, beurre noir, and beurre noisette. Which we'll get to. Ah, here's one we haven't clicked on yet. Beurre fondu. Food prepared by melting butter in water. 
Mer fondue is a food prepared by melting butter in water. That's it. The preparation serves to maintain the butter as an emulsified and creamy concoction. Mer fondue is used by chefs because it has a lesser feel of greasiness on the palate, and the sauce is also very easy for chefs to use compared to whole butter. Its uses are myriad, such as for braising and basting meats, poaching seafood such as lob lobter, lobber, my, my lobers, cooking vegetables, oh, lobber. oh, lobter, and adding flavor to various foods and dishes. See also my food portal. You jump in this and you get to you go to food, and it keeps all your momentum. Beurre maître d'hôtel, type of compound butter. Beurre maître d'hôtel. Oh wait, I forgot to click on the picture. I should click on the picture so we can see the pictures. Here is fish, topped with a beurre fondue. Is that Good. corn? Pardon? Did, did they just drop some corn on this to, as, as a treat, as a flavor? You know, they, they got a little bit of stuff around there. You can take a bite. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest, not super keen on the way the sauce looks, just kind of plopped on top of a fish like that. It looks kind of foul. I, I, listen, it's wet butter. You made wet butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look good, though. Beurre maître d'hôtel. Also referred to as maître d' butter. It's a type of compound butter, or in French, beurre composé, of French origin. Prepared with butter, parsley, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Oh, that sounds good, though. Yeah, that one sounds good. How much to get Puzz to eat wet butter? No amount of money! She'd just do that herself! <laughs> well, now hold on. Hold on, honey. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what? How far can we take this? Uh -huh. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I'll I'll give the ultimate decision to you, but I I will say if you want to set a funny incentive, I will in fact just drop some butter in some water and go to town. <laughs> I don't want to make you eat butter. I don't want to make you drink butter. <laughs> Thank you, Moth Lantern. What's up? It is a savory butter that is used on meats such as steak, including the sauce for Chateaubriand steak, fish, vegetables, and other foods. It may be used in place of a sauce and can significantly enhance a dish's flavor. Some variations with a sweet flavor exist. Usually served cold as sliced discs on foods and is sometimes served as a side condiment. Beurre ma There's This is New York strip with beurre maître d'hôtel, hash brown potatoes, and creamed spanch. Spanch. Oh god, people are talking about Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream now. Just came in here, why is Puzz so excited to eat straight up butter? Because this is Puzz's natural state of being. <laughs> I just think it's fun. <laughs> Enrichment for me. <laughs> yeah, r emphasis on rich! <laughs> You know, I do have butter and ice cream. Now, I can't make any promises here because, <laughs> like, I have no working fucking camera set up and I don't want people, like, looking at my face right now or nothing. Um, I have been tempted to try Gran Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream. The only thing I've heard about someone who is brave enough to try it is that it's foul. Oh, yeah, it's fucking awful, apparently. I want to try it. Same. <laughs> Can you send us butter soda? I don't know if they'll let you mail that. <laughs> they killed people for less. There's butter soda? I, I fucking guess. I don't even like soda, but I, I, I'd want to try that to see what the fuck is up. Yeah, I don't like okay. soda either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Etymology. The name of beurre maître d'hôtel is derived from the manner in which it was commonly prepared from scratch by a restaurant's maître d'hôtel at diners' tables. Also referred to as maître d'hôtel butter. Preparation. Beurre maître d'hôtel is a savory butter prepared by mixing softened butter with very finely minced parsley, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Yes, to one year of butter. Thank you for the resub, and thank you as well for that tip that I just kind of was talking over a little bit. A ratio of around 1.5 tablespoons of parsley to 2 ounces of butter may be used. Maybe. 
if you want, I guess. Additional ingredients may include shallot and Worcestershire sauce. Butter soda is piss yellow and it fucking sucks. Awesome. Thanks for letting us know, Adrian. Awesome. Vinegar is sometimes used, although its inclusion is rare. Cayenne pepper has also been used. After mixing, it is typically rolled in parchment paper or plastic wrap and chilled to harden. Thanks for the butter, we'll thank you for the resub. Uses Beurre maître d'hôtel is usually served cold as sliced discs atop various foods, and sometimes as a side condiment. It is used on grilled meats such as steak and fish, also on eggs, vegetables, potatoes, and breads. Compound butter is just good. It's, it's good to mix butter and stuff. Garlic butter is good. Stuff like this is good. Take your butter and put stuff in it. It tastes good. Oh, uh, this is making me want to make make my own, like, compound butter. I, I remember this was, like, probably close to two years ago now. Jesus Christ. But mm -hmm. when, when, when I started at my old job, one of the my, my co-workers brought in, like, homemade bread and, like, rosemary butter. And I just keep fucking thinking about that. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh, that looks so good. I have to... St oh, that looks so good. <laughs> Someone in chat just said, can I put butter in my soda streamer? Um, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. I've heard tale of people putting, like, milk in, like, you know, soda bubblers and, like, carbonation machine things. Strongly recommending against ever fucking doing that. Don't do it. <laughs> milk products don't mix with carbonation. <laughs> Not a good idea. Bad idea. Bad fucking idea. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> it's your funeral, but I mean, you can do it. Yeah, we, we legally cannot stop you. We also <laughs> legally cannot recommend it. I'm not going to enable you, but I also am not going to stop you. <laughs> this playlist rules, by the way. Thank you. The recent stream was late to start today. It was literally because a couple minutes before starting, I was like, fuck, what if I just do a butter music playlist? And so I did. <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying butter music. It's really good. Uh, some variations exist, including a few sweet versions that include sugar, which may be used on dishes such as pancakes. Oh, that does sound good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Although, usually when I'm having pancakes, I already have sweet in the form of, like, a syrup, so, like, I don't know if I would necessarily need a compound butter to have more sugar in it for that. I, I suppose it depends on, like, what you're doing. This is a really long, varied discussion on butter, isn't it? Welcome! <laughs> To yeah, butter stream. You <laughs> this is not food percent. Do not ever mention food percent around us. Someday. Okay. <laughs> when you Here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. The challenge is not the food. The challenge is I'm not very good at Mario. I suppose. It might take you a couple of days, and so that would just be a normal amount of food then. <laughs> what does that mean? Food Percent of Super Mario World is a uh, joke gimmick speed run uh, in which you have to go through, like, I think it's like one of, at, at least one of every level that has like a food name in it. Uh, either that or it's like you do a like like low percent speed run of Super Mario World. And for every level that has a food in the name, you have to have one of that food. And so, you know, you have stuff like Donut Plains, you have to eat a donut. You have stuff like Vanilla Dome, you have to eat a spoonful of vanilla extract. Soda Lake, you unlock the ability to drink, but you can only drink soda. Uh, there's Butter Bridge, you have to eat butter. You have to eat butter if you do Butter Bridge, you have to. In real life, yes. It's, <laughs> it's a speedrun where the challenge is you have to eat disgusting food, all at once. <laughs> I mentioned this as a joke offhand once around Puzz, and ever since she's that been... was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as you can see, I've learned a lesson here. <laughs> oh, that's a foul speed run concept. It sure is. I think that's literally why it was only ever done, like, once or twice, as a joke, when everyone was like, This is gonna be awful, let's do it. <sighs> when used as a topping, it is typically added just before the dish is served. 
It has also been served melted atop dishes, whereby it is placed atop foods during the last few minutes of cooking. It may be used in the place of a sauce, and a small amount can significantly add to a dish's overall flavor. With citation! <laughs> in Chateaubriand sauce, beurre maître d'hôtel is used as an ingredient in Chateaubriand sauce, which is sometimes used in the preparation of Chateaubriand steak. The butter is used in the last stage of the sauce's preparation, uh, whereby after the sauce is strained, it is finished with beurre maître d'hôtel. Chopped tarragon may also be added to the sauce during this last preparation stage. See also. French cuisine. List of condiments. Steak sauce. Note. A. Most compound butters are savory. Perhaps the best known is the most daunting name, Beurre Maître d'Hôtel, so-called because it was often made tableside by a restaurant's maitre d'. B. Strain through muslin, muslin muslin, I've never known, uh, and finish the sauce away from the fire with four ounces of butter maître d'hôtel, to which may be added a little chopped tarragon. Is weed butter a compound butter? I mean, yeah, by definition, it's butter with stuff compounded into it. I gotta get up and have a stretch. I need to attack the toilet. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Sounds good, bless. Uh, we'll be back. In a couple of minutes, when we do, we're picking up with Beurre Manier. Please look forward to butter. Twenty moths, eating my sweaters and flying around my lamps.
each rabbit in chat says uh, their roommate has a pet gecko named Butter because she is yellow and easily spreadable. Number one, that's really good. Number two, that just has me thinking about that one Tumblr post that was like, Your puppy is gone, boy. I rolled it up and smoked it because it was small and green. I'm just uh, waiting for, for Puzz to hop back on the computer for uh, for more, but I just want to say real quick, uh, thank you all again for tuning in. Thank you for all the support tonight. I hope you're enjoying Butter. <laughs> As a general thing, I suppose. Um, I'm hoping to kind of get back more to it streams-wise uh, this coming week. Probably gonna try and do a whole bunch of, like, shorter streams more often just to kind of ease myself back into it. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I'll have schedule finalized and stuff probably tonight or tomorrow or something. So, uh, yeah. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm gonna undeafen now and say hi to Puzz again. Hi. 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 Why is everyone in chat typing fart? I literally don't know. I literally <laughs> don't know. <laughs> I genuinely literally do not know. <laughs> I think anyway. Anyways, butter. 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 We're not here for farts, we're here for butter. You know what they say, butter is nature's fart, or whatever. Butter, but pronounced they are always saying this. They're literally always saying that. <laughs> Thank you, Warfay, for the 27 month resub. Next up is Belle Manier. Belle Manier, uh, in French, kneaded butter, is a dough consisting of equal parts by volume, soft butter and flour, used to thicken soups and sauces. By kneading the flour and butter together, the flour particles are coated in butter. When the beurre manier is whisked into a hot or warm liquid, the butter melts, releasing the flour particles without creating lumps. Beurre manier is similar to, but should not be confused with, a roux, which is also a thickener made of equal parts of sometimes clarified butter or many other oils and flour, but is cooked before use. Beurre manier is also used as a finishing step for sauces, imparting a smooth, shiny texture prior to service. See also, roux, starch, thickening agent, cornstarch, arrowroot, uh, waxy maize cave, my favorite Mario 64 level, breadcrumbs, starch gelatinization, beurre manier. It's here. It's here. It's lump. It's dough. You can put it in thing. Oh, slap. It, oh, it, clap. It's a little bit of a heap. It's a little bit of a plop dump tour de force. Putting it in my hands and going... <laughs> <laughs> this is Play-Doh. <laughs> Let's see. Next up. Beurre monté. Beurre monté refers to melted butter that remains emulsified, even at temperatures higher than that at which butter usually breaks down. Beurre monté may refer either to the melted butter sauce itself or to the method of making it. Butter is an emulsion of about 2% milk solids, 80% milk fats, clarified butter, and about 18% water. At 70 degrees Celsius, butter normally breaks down into its components. Its components parts. Components with an S parts. Awesome. But in a beurre monté, the butter is heated in such a way that the butter can stay emulsified, even up to 82 to 88 degrees Celsius. It can then be used in many ways, including as a sauce, as an ingredient for other sauces, as a poaching medium, or as a resting medium for cooked meat. To make a beurre monté, what is a resting medium? I've never heard that term before, but I'm assuming it's just like a thing that you put like meat in to like let it rest after you cook it. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, that, that, that sounds right. It's probably what it is, but I've literally never heard that term before like that. Interesting. Uh, to make Learning a new thing, Stephen. Outside of butter. It's not a link, so I can't click on it to make sure, so I'm just assuming I'm right. To make a beurre yeah, monté. Thank you. To make a beurre monté, boil a very small quantity of water, 15 to 60 milliliters, 1 to 4 tablespoons. Once water has come to a boil, turn the heat down and start whisking the cold butter into the water, one or two chunks at a time. Add more butter whenever the chunks have melted. Once the emulsion is started, 
More butter can be added at a time. Continue adding butter while whisking until one has the desired quantity of beurre monté. The beurre monté must then be held warm, but under 88 degrees Celsius, or else it will break. I need to turn this song down a wee little bit, so I'm just gonna tab on over. There we go. Okay. Gustave de Laval. Awesome. You'll love to see it. Okay. Uh, see also list of sauces. Beurre noisette. External links. Beurre monté, the workhouse, the workhorse sauce. From the French Laundry Cookbook. The French Laundry Cookbook. Why, why is it in the laundry? Features recipes from Keller's Restaurant, the French Laundry. Why do they do the damn laundry there? It's for food. It's for goddamn food. That was Beurre monté. Okay. Beurre noir. Which we did read the entirety of already, but, um, we can look at the picture again. We can, uh, have a look at it, a picture. Notorious for including some of the most laborious recipes in print? I hadn't noticed that part. I did not notice that part. <laughs> That's, uh, hmm. <laughs> So quick update on resting mediums. Uh -huh. I haven't found anything about resting mediums specifically, but I did find a long and very detailed article about um, the importance of resting meat. Apparently it's because of when you cook it, all the liquid heads to the center. So if you rest it before cutting into it, it lessens the chance that the liquid's all just going to fucking spill out everywhere right, when yeah. you cut it. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a second. What's that name it's signed with? I recognize it. This is an article by Kenji Lopez Alt. Hell yeah. Let's go, Kenji. Let's go, Kenji. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I know you're not watching my streams, but I hope you're having a wonderful day. <laughs> Sir, I hope you didn't see when, when I just fucking ate a pat of butter. Oh, of course he didn't see. There was no camera on you. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, that's Bear Noir. Bear Noisette. Uh, which we didn't read the entirety of, so we'll go over this one. Bert Noisette, literally hazelnut butter, loosely brown butter. I did read this whole bit about, you know, the intro of what it is. Let's just go to preparation then. When unsalted butter is melted over low heat and allowed to separate into butter fat and milk solids, the latter naturally sink to the bottom of the pan and, if left warming over gentle heat, will begin to cook slightly and turn a deep brown color. As they reach a toasty hazelnut color, the pan is removed from the heat. The result is called beurre noisette, or brown butter. Beurre noisette may be used in its liquid state as a flavorful addition to many foods, or cooled into a solid form. It has a nutty flavor, and is particularly included in the batters of madelines and, uh, financiers. Or financiers, if you want to call them that, I suppose. If bernoisette is not mixed after preparation, but separated into the firm protein and liquid fat components, the latter is the type of clarified butter known as ghee in South Asia, and samna in Middle East countries. And here is some browned butter on a bunch of stuff. And also some fucking foam, I guess? What is that foam, I wonder? Yeah, that, 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 that doesn't, that, that doesn't look Good, I gotta admit. I got dish soap on like this. You soaked it. <laughs> Welcome to high class uh, French cuisine. We've got mushrooms, potatoes. We've got uh, Brussels sprouts. We got an egg. We got brown butter. We got palm olive. We got hand sanitizer that we caramelized. French people love carbonated butter. Confirmed. 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 The picture wouldn't lie, would it? See also. Can people do that? Just go on the internet and lie? I hope not. I hope not. See also. Beurre noir, black butter. Beurre monté. Uh, niter kibé, a type of clarified butter cooked with spices in Ethiopian cuisine. And schmaltz, clarified cooked or clarified chicken or goose fat. Schmaltz, if I'm remembering right, is used in like a lot of Jewish food, I think. Or at least in a couple right. that I've seen. Uh... All right, moving on from our sauces, we have bread and butter pudding. Schmaltz is also one of the most delicious of all fats. Yeah, I have heard similar that it's like real good for imparting flavor. Bread and butter pudding 
is a traditional bread pudding in British cuisine. Slices of buttered bread scattered with raisins are layered in an oven dish, covered with an egg-custard mixture seasoned with nutmeg, vanilla, or other spices, then baked. Alternate names? White Pot. Type Pudding. Place of origin? United Kingdom. Main ingredients? Buttered bread, raisins, egg, milk or cream, nutmeg. Bread Pudding June 2020. Everyone remembers that famous date, right? That famous date of bread pudding. Is this not I... like a muffin? No, this is like a like an English pudding. In English puddings are very, very different from, from North American right. puddings. Right. It's it's more of like a custardy cakey type of thing than a yeah. like a, a, a jiggle slop. I, I will admit I would like to make an, an English style pudding someday. They they look good. I I like things with like a little bit of like cakey and fruit and such. Mm-hmm. Variations. In addition to being baked with custard, the pudding may be served with additional custard or cream. Sometimes raspberry, strawberry, blackberry, or mixed fruit jam, marmalade, or other sweet preserves will be spread upon the bread, along with the butter. Other modern variations include scattering fresh grapes between the layers of bread, melting apples into the egg, mix the egg milk mixture, and using unusual types of bread such as brioche to make it. Lemon or orange peel will add a characteristic flavor. Citation needed. It is traditional to use stale bread. No citation needed for that. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Yeah, the, the melting apples bit has me a little confused. Just, what's the melting point of an apple? How do you melt an apple? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Do you want to fucking superheat an apple with me? I would love to, Holly. I have feelings for you. <laughs> I think we should literally do this. <laughs> it's gonna be so awesome. We're gonna get to visit each other and we're gonna cause a fire within minutes. <laughs> They're gonna kick me out of my apartment. Maybe we shouldn't do that then. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> what was the other thing we were half joking about doing that we were like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't in my fucking small apartment? It was something else involving cooking, but it was like an actual serious thing and not just what if an apple melted? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was now. It you was are something funny. <laughs> Charlotte in chat says you're both currently saying I love Danger Zone. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> we keep joking about that! <laughs> <laughs> which of us is being represented by which fucking pop team epic character depends on like what day of the month it is in a coin flip, basically. When it's Splatoon, <sighs> Holly's I love Danger Zone. When it's cooking mistakes apparently it's i love danger zone <laughs> girlfriends who make jet fuel together stay together <laughs> god the earliest bread and butter puddings were called white pot and used either bone marrow or butter white pots could also be made using rice instead of bread giving rise to the rice pudding in british cuisine oh interesting one of the earliest published recipes for a bread and butter pudding so named is found in Eliza Smith's The Complete Housewife. Complete spelled C-O-M-P-L-E-A-T. Complete. She instructs, quote, <clears throat> Take a two-penny loaf and a pound of fresh butter. Spread it in very thin slices as to eat. Cut them off as you spread them and stone half a pound of raisins and wash a pound of currants. Then put puff paste at the bottom of a dish and lay a row of your bread and butter and strew a handful of currants, a few raisins and some little bits of butter, and do so till your dish is full. Then boil three pints of cream and thicken it with co when cold with the yolks of ten eggs, a grated nutmeg, a little salt, near half a pound of sugar, and some orange flower water. Pour this in just as the pudding is going in the oven. No, that's not a Julia Child voice. A Julia Child voice is much more like this, and even then I can't do a really good one. Someday. <laughs> I take a drink. Thank you for the 11-month resub! 
Much appreciated. Uh, Howdy. It's been a while. Have a fun food. Yeah, butter is pretty fun if you think about it. <laughs> Some recipes call for a simple meringue to be made from the discarded egg whites and sugar, which is spread over a layer of jam or preserves on the top of the pudding after it's I come from the oven. So the meringue is cooked it until it is slightly browned on top. This dessert changes name to... The Queen's Pudding. The Queen's Pudding. Wait, no one's allowed to eat that anymore because she fucking died. I was gonna say nothing. More. Sorry, we're in mourning. No more of the pudding. She fucking did. Thank you, Cherry Boomer, for the 9 month resub. Much appreciated. Uh, some recipes. Oh, I already read that one. In 1845, Eliza Akaton suggests giving, quote, a good flavor of lemon rind and bitter almonds, or of cinnamon if preferred, to a pint of new milk. Uh, of note, bitter almonds is different from, like, you know, just almonds. It is it is specific it's a specific like type of plant. Rather than just like, what if almonds were really bitter? Uh it's a different thing. Uh where yeah, more cyanide in them is one thing I know about them. <laughs> uh or of cinnamon if preferred to a pint of new milk. Uh then adding cream and sugar, thickened with beaten eggs. Her recipe also calls for a glass of brandy to be added to the mixture. There was a picture uh, posted in, night in in chat, but the, the bot did just ding you for it. Uh, this is... This is butter. Hi, butter. This is also butter. Hi, butter. Awesome. Oh, I would like to cradle <laughs> butter so gentle in the crook of my arm. Mm-hmm. Piece of cricket. Oh, baby, that's butter. Thank you for butter. Say thank you to butter right now. All of you in chat, thank right you, now. Thank you, butter. Right fucking now. In American cuisine, it may be called cold bread pudding. A popular dish in Egypt, uh, Om Ali, uh, is made with either bread or pastry and includes pistachio nuts, but no eggs. Like your sand for the sand. Water. See also list of br list of bread dishes. Oh no! Oh, I can't. Uh -oh. I can't keep doing this to myself, dude. <laughs> I can't let my eyes be bigger than my stomach here. <laughs> Some other time. Another day. I've already committed to all pastries. I can't keep doing this. Hey, Holly, I have another thing to say to you off stream later. <laughs> okay! Next up, buttered rice. Um, This is Burmese, so I'm... Not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce it. Also known as butter rice or butter and lentil rice, is a festive rice dish in Burmese cuisine, typically associated with celebratory occasions like wedding receptions or almsgiving feasts. The rice dish is typically paired with a traditional Burmese curry or mutton or Burmese chicken or mutton curry. Buttered rice uses long-grained uh, pa san mue, probably not right at all. My apologies. Uh, or basmati rice. And in its most basic form, is cooked with butter, lentils, and bay leaves. Thank you, Killer Lesbian, for the 24-month resub. My dog is named Butter Short for Butterscotch. So every time <laughs> oh no! Butter, she perks up its I'm so sorry for teasing your dog. Tell your dog Butter that she's a good girl. <laughs> Thank you for the 24 months. Who's a good girl? You are. Yes, you are. Yeah. I can't believe I'm teasing someone's fucking dog on stream. That's awful. <laughs> I'm history's greatest monster. You're telling the dog he they're good! I guess. Where was I? <laughs> Butter. That's where I was. Uh, cashew nuts and raisins may be added, and the dish can be spiced with cinnamon sticks, cardamom pods, or cloves, and garnished with fried golden onions to serve. I've had, I've had rice dishes very similar to this. Um, and they're fucking delicious. So yeah, this sounds fucking awesome. Next up, butter cake. Type of cake. A butter cake is a cake in which one of the main ingredients is butter. <laughs> Who could have fucking guessed? Awesome! A butter cake is baked with basic ingredients. Butter, sugar, eggs, flour, and leavening agents such as baking powder or baking soda. Considered one of the quintessential cakes in American baking. Butter cake originated from the English pound cake, which traditionally used equal amounts of butter, flour, sugar, and eggs to bake a heavy, rich cake. And by the way, this is hazelnut brown butter cake. Oh, that does look good. It does look good. Is this... 
like a sticker or like a drawing on this plate because it's like a little cat reaching up. Yeah, hey! <laughs> what is that? What are you doing? Oh, they they literally took a picture of their cat and put it on this plate for the Wikipedia photo. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love people. <laughs> Thank you, Justin Grimes, for posting this to Flickr. <laughs> That's like, have, have you seen the, um, one, the like, one photo reference thing going around where it's like the, the guys dramatically cradling each other, but there's a cat just laying in the foreground? Maybe? Same vibe as that to me. Awesome. Someone knows what I'm talking about. Probably. I, I mostly don't look at things on the internet if I can help it, so I don't know exactly what that is. And this is why you are a healthier and stronger person than I. <laughs> Shucks. The invention of baking powder and other chemical leavening agents during the 19th century substantially increased the flexibility of this traditional pound cake by introducing the possibility of creating lighter, fluffier cakes using these traditional combinations of ingredients. And it is the transformation that brought about the modern butter cake. Ingredients and technique. Butter cakes are traditionally made using a creaming method, in which the butter and sugar are first beaten until fluffy, and to, uh, to incorporate air into the butter. Eggs are then added gradually, creating an emulsion, followed by alternating portions of wet and dry ingredients. Ayo, hey, this cake pounding? No, 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 no. That's, that's pound cake. This cake is creaming. It's different. Butter cakes are typically rich and moist ugh, when stored at room temperature, but they tend to stiffen, dry out, and lose flavor when refrigerated making them unsuitable for filling or frosting in advance with ingredients that must be refrigerated, such as cream cheese frosting and pastry cream. Citation needed. Pictured here is gooey butter cake. They sure do have some words on this page, yeah. Here's a butter cake made with cashew nuts. Hang on. Uploaded by VS Code Fanboy. Fun name. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> See also. Butterkuchen? A German butter cake? Sorry, they're doing what with their butter? Gooey butter cake? A St. Louis variant on butter cake? And pound cake. Uh, hang on. Butterkuchen is there. Gooey butter cake is there. Uh, pound cake is not, because it's not a butter dish. All right. Moving on to a butter cookie. Oh, butter cookies. These, these, these are the grandma biscuits you always find the tins of that never actually have the cookies in them. They just have, like, you know, knitting supplies or, like, loose change or, uh... I think my grandma used to specifically just use these tins to put, like, candies in, which I always thought was kind of funny. I think I had one that just had a bunch of seashells and rocks in. Huh. Hell yeah. Butter cookies. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You want to say something? No, no, I was gonna just say that it was specifically because it was mine, and you know me. <laughs> I do, and I love you. I love you. Continue, <laughs> butter cookies. Butter cookies, or uh, butter biscuits, also known as Danish biscuits, are cookies originating in Denmark, consisting of butter, flour, and sugar. Originating in Denmark, they are similar to shortbread cookies. You have a hostess cake tin you currently keep a loose cat skeleton in. Hell yeah, it's a good enough place as any to keep a cat skeleton, I suppose. Deconstructed cat is a very good way of describing that. <laughs> the butter cookie is often categorized as a, quote, crisp cookie due to its texture, caused in part by the quantity of butter and sugar. It is generally necessary to chill its dough to enable proper manipulation and handling. Butter cookies at their most basic have no flavoring, but they're often flavored with vanilla, chocolate, and coconut, and or topped with sugar crystals. They also come in a variety of shapes such as circles, squares, ovals, rings, and bretzel-like forms. And with a variety of appearances, including marbled, checkered, or plain. It's bold to go they have no flavoring. The flavoring is butter and sugar. <laughs> and flour. Those are flavors. They're just, you know... How do I say white people flavors without sounding mean? <laughs> You, you can just say that, it's fine. Well then. <laughs> uh, 
using piping bags. Twisted, twisted shapes, fucked up shapes, cruel, evil cookie shapes can be made. <laughs> I want to make evil cookies. <laughs> Any cookie we can make together can be an evil cookie if you wanted to. Hooray! Making evil cookies with my girlfriend. This Let's is go. gay rights. Let's go. In some parts of the world, such as Europe and North America, I almost misread that as butler cookies. <laughs> Butter cookies are often served around Christmas time. Butter cookies are also a very popular gift in Hong Kong, especially during Chinese New Year. Oh, I didn't know that. Neither did I. I'm learning so much. Danish butter cookies. This is the picture that Puzz was talking about? It's on DeviantArt. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it looked like they were naked. I don't know if they actually were, but I tabbed out in case they were. <laughs> they weren't, but it does look like it. <laughs> it. It does look a little bit, and the lighting doesn't really help. They had undies on? Okay. <laughs> I kind of didn't notice the undies, because I noticed the 90% of the rest of their body not having anything on. <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes sense for a reference photo, but also... <laughs> but also... <laughs> yeah, also the lighting sure, certainly didn't help, huh? <laughs> Danish butter cookies. Denmark has been a notable exporter of butter cookies for many years, in particular to the US and Asia. The cookies are made in many varieties, and exported industrial grade butter cookies are typically packed and sold in tins, with Royal Dansk being a notable example. It is a Danish brand of butter cookies. <laughs> You've probably seen the tins. You've probably seen the tins. See also, cookie butter, which is different from butter cookies. Is cookie butter on here? Yes, it is. Uh, Kulorakia, traditional Greek dessert. Wait, have I had these before? I fucking had these before. These are delicious. These are delicious. They look good. Uh, is this also on the list? No. Damn, someone should make an edit and add that. They're delicious, though. Uh, if I went through fucking all of these, we'd be here, like, for a year, and I can't do that. I would die. Uh, Lengua de Gato, which are Filipino butter cookies. Hell yeah. List of cookies. Peanut butter cookie. Petit beurre. Or véritable petit beurre. Also known as the initials VPB. Uh, very penis balls. Is a kind of shortbread from Nantes. Best known in France in general, and especially in Pays de la Loire. And shortbread. Shortbread's good. Shortbread's good. Is would you consider shortbread to be a butter dish? I think I would. It's got a lot it's of. It's pretty. It's up there. It's got a lot of butter in there. Yeah. Also weird that it's not on the list, but uh oh well. You can make changes to the list if you want. Just you know, don't be a fucking nuisance about it. It's here for a reason, not for you to be a little joker. Moving on to butter pecan. Butter pecan is a flavor, prominent especially in the United States, in ice cream, cakes, and cookies. Roasted pecans, butter, and vanilla flavor are used in butter pecan baked goods. Butter pecan ice cream is a smooth vanilla ice cream with a slightly buttery flavor, with pecans added. It is manufactured by many major ice cream brands. A variant of the recipe is butter almond, which replaces the pecans with almonds. Butter pecan is a popular flavor of ice cream produced by many companies and is one of the 31 flavors of Baskin Robbins. Puzz, you're from the United States. Have you ever had this? I I have seen it. I have not had it. This was the kind of thing that I assumed was just made up as a kid because I only ever heard about it like in cartoons and stuff. <laughs> it's not really a thing here where I live. This is a little bit of Granny Cream's cold butter ice cream. Take the cold butter, stick it in the ice cream. <laughs> Add some pecans, etc., etc. That's dad ice cream? Damn. Lesbians... It's a little bit of dad slash grandma flavor. Listen, lesbians are an honorary type of dad, so I'm allowed. That's true. Please stay tuned <laughs> in a few weeks for dad stream. What do you mean? We were talking about this yesterday. I oh, oh. Can I just say what that is? <laughs> I... That, that's up to you, darlings. Your stream. <laughs> We're starting the Yakuza game soon. Hooray! <laughs> Kiryu's in those. He's a dad. <laughs> Simply three days.
dads, Kiryu and two lesbians. <laughs> <sighs> God, it, we, we were talking about it like, yeah, you know, the next time we're able to do like streams together over a weekend because like next weekend you're busy um so we were like yeah. you know tentatively the weekend after that what what kind of stuff would we do well you know we would uh probably start the yakuza series and we start yakuza zero and we probably also get started on the next latent game so it's like oh so we're just doing a weekend of games about dads <laughs> for sure drawing holly and puzz as suke bon? oh fuck you can't just say that <laughs> I'm very excited now. <laughs> Where were we? Butter. We were at butter. I forgot. We were at butter. Butter pie. English savory pie. Not to be confused with butter tart. Canadian dessert pastry. Butter pie. A butter pie is a traditional Ingri English savory pie, consisting mainly of onions and potatoes. It is also sometimes served on a savory barm cake. The pie is stocked by chip shops, sandwich shops, local corner shops, and some su supermarkets within Lancashire. Also known as a Catholic pie, Friday pie, air pie, or special. Special? Special. 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 Special? Special. This is the type of pie they put in a fucking wig and kebab. It's it's literally just like here's here's a savory pie of onions, potatoes, and butter. <laughs> we got your carbs, we got your fats, we put in even more bread. Special. Special. The pie is known to be created for workers uh, from Lancashire's Catholic community to consume on days, mainly Friday, when meat could not be eaten. From 2006, the butter pie was included in the annual World Pie Eating Championship in Wigan! <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> Butted bomb. <laughs> Onions, potatoes on. You're in heaven. <laughs> I always mix up the fucking lines uh, from the Wigan Kebab video. And the, the one thing I always remember above all else is, and I quote, it's a treat for a kid. That specifically has permanently warped <laughs> anything I've ever said forever. I'm constantly thinking of things and calling it a treat for a kid. <laughs> Why, in Wigan, it's as good as Grave is another really good one. Yeah, Jill Cats in chat. I'm fucking pointing at my screen in delight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the like the northern English accent way of saying gravy. <laughs> gravy. I think I had a fucking moment watching that video, remembering as a kid watching Chicken Run, and the part where that one chicken is like, "Oh, I don't want to be baked into a pie. I don't like gravy." <laughs> <laughs> Butter pies were served on match days at Preston North End's Deepdale. Deepdale is the name of, like, a place where dwarves go to play sports. Yeah! <laughs> Deepdale Stadium until 2007, when the providers, Ashworth Foods Limited, ceased trading. With the new providers, Holland's Pies, not offering a butter pie, two Preston North End fans started a campaign on Facebook calling for the return of butter pies to the match day menu. In 2010, the butter pie made a return to Preston North End's Deepdale Stadium after the huge demand for the pie. So, something is so funny about massive, uproarious demand for an onion and potato pie. Yeah! God. I kind of get it, but it is also very funny to me. This dish is also mentioned in the Paul and Linda McCarthy song, Uncle Albert slash Admiral Halsey? Which contains the lyrics, I had another look and I had a cup of tea and a butter pie. Okay, <laughs> it's good for Paul. Areas. I think it's for Paul, I guess. Areas served. 
The butter pie is served in most areas of the historic boundaries of Lancashire, including- Oh, Can't show that on stream! Including Blackburn, Blackpool, Bolton, Burnley, Barry, Chorley, Lancaster, Preston, St. Helens, and Wigan! Whose residents are sometimes known by the nickname Pie Eaters. The the Pie Eaters bit, I remember, specifically had to do with... Um, I gotta jiggle the music again. Uh, there we go. The, the, the Pie Eaters thing specifically had something to do with, like, um, workers that were, like, on strike uh, and then, like, you know, eventually broke and went back to work first or something like that. And so, like, as a, like, as a demeaning term, they were called Pie Eaters or something like that. I don't remember specifically why. Also, that might not be, like, entirely correct, but that was that was what I heard. Gustave de Laval. Uh, Gustave de Laval, by the way. I remember specifically I heard that, like, on some video from a British dude talking about British pies and how, like, they, they, they kind of owned it and were like, you know what? Yeah, we're going to live up to that. We are fucking pie eaters now, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and that's butter pie. Not to be confused with, oh, also, see also, uh, pâte aux pommes de terre, which is uh, a French potato pastry dish, I suppose. And list of pies, tarts, and flans? Oh no. Oh, Holly. Okay. This is like the, what, the third or fourth one today? <sighs> well, I guess I've got ideas for future streams. <laughs> I can't be doing this anytime soon. It'd be murder on my throat, but. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> but they can go in the back pocket. Fucking someday, that's for sure. <laughs> We're here for butter. Specifically, butter tart. Now, butter tarts are delicious. I fucking love these. These are great. A I butter tart. I've never had one, but they look really good. They're, like, largely a Canadian thing, but also there are, like, very, very similar things in the States. Like, have you ever had pecan pie? Uh, once. Pecan pie is very, very similar to butter tarts. Good to know, good to know. A butter tart, or in French, tarte au beurre, uh, is a type of small pastry tart, highly regarded in Canadian cuisine. The sweet tart consists of a filling of butter, sugar, syrup, and egg, baked in a pastry shell until the filling is semi-solid with a crunchy top. Right, so like the top gets like all caramelized and like crystallized, kind of. It's real good. The butter tart should not be confused with the butter pie, a savory pie from the Preston area of Lancashire, England, or with bread and butter pudding. Thank you, Metasaur, for the reset. Much That's appreciated. A, oh yeah. Posted your recipe on Twitter? Fuck yeah. Go check out Science Twitter in general, because she's really cool and does really cool art, uh, mm -hmm. and also does real cool streams sometimes. But also go check it out for her fucking butter tart recipe. Hell yeah. <laughs> Recipes for the butter tart vary according to the families baking them. Because of this, the appearance and physical characteristics of the butter tart, the firmness of the pastry or the consistency of its filling, also vary. Traditionally, the English-Canadian tart consists of butter, sugar, and eggs in a pastry shell, similar to the French-Canadian tarte au sucre, or the base of the U.S. pecan pie without the nut topping. The butter tart is different from the sugar pie given the lack of flour in the filling. The butter tart is different from pecan pie in that it has a, quote, runnier filling due to the omission of corn starch. Often, raisins, walnuts, or pecans are added to the traditional butter tart, Although the acceptability of such additions is a matter of national debate, it is? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Hello? I, I've literally never heard of anyone debating this. <laughs> it's always just been like, hey, do you want nuts or raisins in it? And either like, eh, I could go or whatever for whatever. Or like, oh, you know, I don't like this kind of thing. <laughs> like, No, national fucking controversy. Polarizing debate with citation. My god. My god. <laughs> the Great Butter Tart War of 1812. I was so sad when it happened to them. Uh, as an iconic Canadian food and one of the most popular desserts in the country, the raisin or no raisin question can provoke polarizing debate. What is there to fucking debate? If you like raisins, you have it with raisins. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> you give a shit. Holly, what is your raisins opinion? I fucking like them in baked goods. <laughs> Me too. I, I rarely meet other raisins likers. Yeah, like, I, I don't really... I'm not super keen on just kind of, like, having them on their own, but, like, when they're with other things, 
I like them. I like them. More exotic flavors are produced by some bakers. You can say that about any food, though. <laughs> This this is the one that I'm gonna have hot fucking opinions on because this is the one that I know things about personally. <laughs> Examples such as maple, bacon, pumpkin, chili, and salted caramel cardamom flavors have been made for competitions. Maple, I mean, yeah, that's what you use for like the syrup, sure. Bacon, eh, that that's like a meme. That's like a meme tart because bacon is the meme meat. Uh. Pumpkin, I could see being an interesting addition to it, but it would make the texture, like, much thicker. Uh, yeah, you'd which... have to really be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. I would you just have that. to really get your, your groove ratios just right. Like, if you did it right, it'd be, like, kind of like a mini pumpkin pie, which I think would be nice. Mm -hmm. Now, by chili here, they do mean chili peppers and not, like, you know, chili, like, the big stuff you make in a pot that's all stewed with beans and tomatoes and stuff. Uh, and, like, chili peppers can go really good with a lot of, like, sweet dishes, so, like, I think that could work. I think that could work. Mm -hmm. Uh, salted caramel cardamom. I don't remember what cardamom tastes like on its own. I know I've eaten things with cardamom in it, and I've, like, cooked with it before. I don't remember distinctly what, like, the taste is. I mean, I would try that, I guess, but, like, that's just, like, oh, you know, a new twist on it rather than this is the the norm kind of thing, you know? It's like it's like someone going, like, oh, here's, like, a, a different twist on a, a chocolate chip cookie kind of thing and, like, doing a different with it. Uh, mm. I saw a message in chat. Uh, not big on raisins baked into most things because the baking kind of rehydrates them and makes them half grapes, but you love them in cinnamon raisin bagels when they're all smeared out. Cinnamon raisin bagels are so fucking good. Uh, they are good. I haven't had a good cinnamon raisin bagel in, like, fucking years. Also consider, uh, something that's much easier to bake at home, uh, given how I, like, I've never really tried making bagels myself, but I imagine there's, you know, a whole process to it. Uh, raisin bread. Like, cinnamon raisin bread. I was Real about to say good. cinnamon raisin bread. Ooh, I want it. Maybe I'll make some at, at some point. That shit is so much easier. <laughs> to make yourself. If this turns into another RTVS cooking stream, you'll cry. I do not have a setup to do cooking streams with. However, someday, fucking eventually, probably after I've like been able to move out, I would like to get one set up because I really would like to cook on stream. That sounds fun to me. <laughs> we also had that dumb thing we talked about. <laughs> yeah, but that's a secret. Secret. <laughs> History. Oh, I guess first I should read this. Here's a pecan butter tart. Oh, I want to put it in my mouth. They, they are little, like, little bite-sized things, like two or three bite type of tarts. They're good, they're good, they're good. I like them, I like them. You like watching cooking streams? Hell yeah. I have wanted to fucking do cooking streams literally for years since before I started streaming, because I watched a couple other people do stuff like that, and I was like, oh my god, that seems like such a cool thing to do. <laughs> so, like, eventually, once I am moved out and know what, like, what my kitchen space is going to be in a new place, uh, then I'll consider, you know, the logistics of what I would need for that. <laughs> Honestly, especially if you don't want to, you know, do, do face cam or nothing like that, you could just get one of those, like, um, those those essentially like headsets isn't the right word. Like but a they GoPro go type of thing. Head. Just just the thing that like attaches to your phone so it like records from your perspective. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. I I had one for for work that was just like twenty bucks. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to uh, I'll look into that. Perhaps. Uh, type is pastry, snack or dessert course, originating from camera. Camera? It's my fucking brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's originating from camera. It's 9.24 p.m. and I've been reading for like three hours straight. <laughs> yeah. Main ingredients. Pastry shell, butter, sugar, syrup, and eggs. Variations. Additions of raisins, walnuts, or pecans, or other flavorings. Food energy per serving. 580 kcal. It's a bold assumption considering how very much also says, yeah, the recipes all vary. <laughs> The recipes all vary depending on what you're doing with it. Anyway, here's an exact KCAL count. By the way, they'll all have this exact number because life is like a video game. My life is like a... I can't <laughs> sing that song or I'm going to break out into hives. 
<laughs> Ryan's a pretty baby. Listen to that song so much. Literally, I saw him post that remix, and I like opened it up, and I was like, he's not doing that one fucking why life is like a video game song, is he? And then the lyrics started, and I felt like I was gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Collecting coins. That's not the Ryan Chango show. Cursing us all. <laughs> Butter tarts were common in pioneer Canadian cooking, and they remain a characteristic pastry of Canada, considered a recipe of genuinely Canadian origin. It is primarily eaten in and associated with the English-speaking provinces of Canada. Are you sure? They're pretty goddamn big in, in Quebec, too. <laughs> like, this basically just means they're not really associated with the territories. <laughs> the butter tart is a derivative of one or more of the following. Border tart, a similar pie including dried fruit from the Anglo-Scottish border country. Sugar pie, or tarte au sucre, uh, which possibly came with the arrival of the King's Daughters in Quebec, which was, um, like, fucking King Louis uh, told a bunch of young French women, like, hey, I'm gonna give you a huge stipend to move to, Qu like, to New France at the time, to move to Quebec, um, so that, like, the people living there can have wives and have sex and have babies. Awesome! During the 1600s, where the imported brides used maple syrup, butter, and dried fruit to make a possible precursor to modern examples of a butter tart. King L! <laughs> That's any king. Pecan pie. No, no, King L. Ui. Oh, I get the joke. I get the joke now. I thought you were just calling him King L because he was a fucking king and he's like, yeah, you suck. I, I realize now the joke is King Louis. I'm a fucking idiot. All <laughs> things can be true. Pecan king pie. King Louis taking a massive L. Happy Have Sex Sunday, 1600s Quebec. <laughs> Shoutouts to all the people in New France watching the stream right now. I know you're out there. I know you've discovered time travel. <sighs> Goddamn, New France got bitch! <laughs> Pecan pie, which possibly came north from the southern United States. Speculation? Backwards pie, which is found in the Maritimes in western Canada and made with corn syrup. Shoe fly pie, which is made with molasses and comes from the Pennsylvania Dutch community. I've heard of this, yeah, I've heard it's, it's apparently pretty good. Uh, treacle tart, which is an English, pa in English pastry made with golden syrup or treacle. The earliest published Canadian recipe is from Barrie, Ontario. You just ate a big butter to prepare to watch? Oh no! <laughs> Why do people no, that's keep my doing job. that? No one else is supposed to do that. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> I'm allowed to try to dissuade other people from following in my mistakes. You know, I suppose I do that too. <laughs> the earliest published Canadian recipe is from Barrie, Ontario, dating back to 1900 and can be found in the Women's Auxiliary of the Royal Victoria Hospital Cookbook to which a Mrs. Mary Ethel McLeod submitted the recipe for a butter tart filling. The original cookbook and recipe is housed as the, at the Simcoe Country Archives. County Archives, rather, sorry. Another early publication of a butter tart recipe was found in a 1915 pie cookbook. The food was an integral part of early Canadian cuisine and often viewed as a source of pride. Similar tarts are made in Scotland, where they're often referred to uh, as... Eclofession butter tarts? I'm probably mispronouncing that horribly. I apologize to all the Scots in chat. In France, they are related to the much more common tarte à la frangipane. I'd probably also pronounce that wrong, but I won't apologize to the French. Uh, that differs from the basic Canadian recipe only by the addition of ground almonds. Awesome. Uh... Why are people saying gay pride pie? What happened? Why, why, is, he, why is the pie gay? Because <laughs> well, we're eating it, Holly. You know, you make a good point. Cultural identity. Butter tarts are an integral part of central Canadian cuisine 
and are objects of cultural pride. Oh, because of cultural pride. I get it. <laughs> because the word pride came up. <laughs> Happy Pride <Okay>. Canadians! <laughs> Happy Canadian Pride Month. This happens whenever I goddamn say it is, and it's about being gay in Canada rather than being proud of being Canadian. Hooray! Uh, objects of cultural pride of many communities across Ontario and indeed Canada. The cultural and community connection with the tart has spawned butter tart themed tourism, such as the Butter Tart Festival at Muskoka Lakes, Ontario, the trademarked Butter Tart Trail at Wellington, North Ontario, and the Butter Tart Tour uh, in Kawarthis, Northumberland, Ontario. The two competing associations have since resolved their dispute, called the Butter Tart Wars by Canadian Living. <laughs> Joking about this, and it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say Carthus? I don't think I said anything like Carthus. I said Kawarthus, Kawarthus, Northumberland. That's not Carthus, though. The Carthus Central Highland is French. They're not Canada. This is different. I guess. Well, I guess I made a post on Tumblr talking about how, like. A, a lot of, uh, you know, Heaven's Word, even though I acknowledge that it's really, really good writing and a really good story with, like, really good characters in it, just kind of gives me a headache to think about because the whole, like, oh yeah, here's, like, a French isolationist xenophobic nation with, like, you know, huge Catholic guilt and class divide everywhere uh, and, you know, issues with the government talking about how, you know, we have to fight the outsider. That's just growing up in Quebec. <laughs> and also it's cold. <laughs> That's just growing up in Quebec, dude. <laughs> this is my life. <sighs> Video games. Such escapism. Less dragons in Quebec, though, usually. Usually. Uh, not all the time. Through the mutual agreement to modify the Butter Tart Tour to Kawarthis Northumberland Butter Tart Tour. The first Kawarthis Northumberland Butter Tart Tour Taste Off, that's a hell of a mouthful. You know what else is a mouthful? A butter tart. Mm. Was launched at the Flavor Festival in Peterborough on Sunday, April 28th, 2013, where four bakeries were crowned winners by a panel of celebrity judges. Ontario's Best Butter Tart Festival and Contest uh, is an annual event held in Midland, Ontario. Uh, my god, we've got Curthus, we've got Midlanders, Ontario is just Final Fantasy XIV, and Quebec is Heaven's Word. <laughs> what does it all mean? What does it all mean? <laughs> I think it means that you're playing Final Fantasy XIV with an expanded free trial up to... <laughs> What's BC and Walker? <laughs> Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Midlander, Ontario, right. The contest portion of the festival attracts bakers from across Ontario and is Canada's largest butter tart themed celebration with over 50,000 tarts sold in the festival market in 2014. National Geographic recognized the significance of the butter tart in an article on Georgian Bay, Ontario. In October 2013, uh, referring to a standard Wasaga Beach, they stated that, quote, It's the homemade Canadian butter tarts, flaky crust with gooey pecan filling, that sets this place apart from other lakeside ice cream stands. Guess that makes your life like a video game? Mods, ban this sick freak. <laughs> Mods, blam this shit. <laughs> National Geographic recognized the significance of the butter tart in an article on Georgian Bay. I read that already. The production of butter tarts in Canada slowed after a flood in Quebec in April 2019, striking a major production center. That... that affected butter tarts? Global News reported the Vachon Bakery in St. Marie de Beauce uh, had to be evacuated after a long-term flood. In July, Global News reported the bakery was slowly getting back to speed. The butter tart was celebrated by the issue of a commemorative postage stamp by Canada Post in April 2019 as part of the Sweet Canada series. 
The Canadian alternative rock band Len referenced butter tarts on their 1999 international hit Steal My Sunshine, which confused some non-Canadian listeners. It is so funny what awesome. forms of pop culture end up being referenced in unrelated Wikipedia articles. I uh-huh. think it says so much. <laughs> it genuinely makes me so happy, always. See also, list of butter dishes, list of pies, tarts, and flans, Canadian cuisine, list of Canadian inventions and discoveries. Now, was the butter tart invented or discovered? Think on this. Think on this, because I gotta get up and have a stretch and have a break. I'll be back in a little bit.
I'll be completely honest with y'all. I'm starting to feel kind of lightheaded. <laughs> A little bit. It may be rest time sooner rather than later. <laughs> I can keep going. I can keep going for now. Uh, I hope you understand if Butterstream doesn't end up being the entirety of List of Butter Dishes. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there would be a part two, <laughs> just because that wouldn't be very much. <laughs> Drink some butter and maybe you'll feel better? Mods? Mods? Ben, this sick freak? <laughs> Opposite. <laughs> Let's get back to it. Uh, there's actually not too, too many left, so maybe this is more doable than I think it is. Yeah. Let's see. Moving on next to... Butter tea. South Asian drink mainly consisting of butter churned with tea. Butter tea, also known as pocha, uh, boja, Tibetan tea, uh, cha suma, uh, churned tea, uh, I'm not even gonna try and, like, butcher the, the Mandarin Chinese pronunciation. Uh, Su Yo Cha, I believe. Ooh. I, I almost forget, you do know some, some, some Mandarin, don't you? Very, very little. I gotta brush back up on it. I used to be better than I am now. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the, uh, Ladaki? Or Ladaki? I hope one of those is right, and if not, I apologize. Language is a drink of the people in the Himalayan region of Nepal, Bhutan, India, particular, particularly in Ladakh, uh, Sikkim, and uh, Arunachal Pradesh. Pakistan, especially in uh, Gilgit, Baltistan, Tibet, and western regions of modern-day China and the Caribbean. Traditionally, it is made from tea leaves, yak butter, water, and salt, although butter made from cow's milk is increasingly used given its wider availability and lower cost. Uh, butter tea likely originated in the Himalayan region between Greater Tibet and the Indian subcontinent. I drink more water. Ah, I drink more water. <sighs> History. Oh, I should click on this picture, actually. That has an interesting, like, look and texture to it. Yeah, I I'd be willing to try this at least once. Tea, salt, and butter. It sounded like someone drew a sword? What, you mean this? That's the sound of my, like, water thermos, like, brushing up against my teacup. I don't have a sword. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm manifesting. Does it actually sound like a blade on sheathing? Are you kidding me? Does that, does that sound like a sword to you all? I don't know what a sword sounds like. <laughs> oh, I think I would much rather own an axe or a hammer, but <laughs> I appreciate the gumption. Uh, type is beverage, place of origin, Indian subcontinent and Tibet, region or state, South and East Asia and the Caribbean. Main ingredients, tea leaves, yak butter, salt. Tea is the term used if a region first encountered the product by sea. Cha is the name used if first encountered by land. Yeah, I remember reading okay. something about that or hearing something about that a little while ago. And it had something to do with like the, the you know, the linguistics of like the, the people who were growing and trading it kind of thing. Because um, I know that like, uh, like chai, for instance, is just like, it does just mean tea in India type of thing. <laughs> Chai tea! A nice tea tea! Uh-huh. Like, when when people in, you know, like, North America say, Oh yeah, we're getting chai! Like, it it means, like, a specific type of preparation of tea, uh, usually. But then, you know, if you're in India, you're like, Oh yeah, I'd like chai! There's It's just like, well, what, 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 what kind of tea? Yeah, come on. <laughs> you yeah, love... Yeah, non-bread! <laughs> <laughs> bread, bread! I, I always forget non also just means bread! <laughs> you love titty? Me too, let's fucking go. Yeah! <laughs> now we're talking! This is not the tit stream, this is the butter stream. I legally can't do a tit stream. <laughs> 
Unless... Well, I just had a bad idea. <laughs> I think I know what you're going for, and I'm here in support. <laughs> a bad idea that might literally actually get me banned from Twitch if anyone takes it in bad faith. <laughs> <laughs> However... Possible. <laughs> History. The history of tea in Tibet dates back to the 7th century during the Tang Dynasty. However, butter tea did not become popular in Tibet until about the 13th century, the time of the, uh, the Phagmodrupa Dynasty. According to legend, a Chinese princess married a king of Tibet, which later helped establish trade routes between China and Tibet. These trade routes brought tea into Tibet from China. Later, butter was added to the tea that was brought from China, as butter is and was a staple in Tibetan cuisine. By the 8th century, it was common to drink tea in Tibet. In the 13th century, tea was then used uh, in Tibetan religious ceremonies. Today, butter tea is still prevalent in Tibet, as citizens drink up to 60 small cups of the tea per day. Preparation The highest quality of butter tea is made by boiling uh, pu'er tea. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, apologies if I, again, I'm butcher butchering it. Uh, Pu'er tea leaves in water for half a day, achieving a dark brown color. It is then skimmed and poured into a cylinder with fresh yak butter and salt, which is then shaken. Uh, the result is a liquid that is about the thickness of a stew, or thick oil. It is then poured into, into teapots or jars. It's- it's- that's a very thick consistency. I hadn't considered that. Another method is to boil water and add handfuls of the tea into the water, which is allowed to steep until it turns almost black. Salt is then added, along with a little soda if wanted. I I assume by soda they don't mean, like, cola. I assume they mean, like, soda as in, like, the... the Mineral? Chemical compound? Question mark? I, uh, I don't know how to quite describe it, but I think I've heard of, like, you know, kind of, like flavor sort of so essentially just carbonated liquid or maybe just like, like carbonated water yeah maybe, maybe? question mark I'd, i'm not sure there's there's no link like here carbonate soda maybe yeah right there's no link here i can click on so <laughs> oh, we'll never know. Mm -hmm. the tea is then strained through a horsehair or reed colander into a wooden butter churn and a large lump of butter is added this is then churned until the tea reaches the proper consistency, and transferred to copper pots uh, that sit on a brazier to keep them warm. When a churn is not available, a wooden bowl and rapid stirring will suffice. Here is a Tibetan monk churning butter tea. I do like all the little kettles in back there. I'm always so charmed by kettles. They have such a cute shape to them. Just got back from work, we having a Wikipedia adventure? We sure are! Welcome to butter. Uh, each teapot and cup size symbolize the standard of living of each family. A ceramic pot is the most widely used, while those made from copper or bronze may be used by families with a higher standard of living. In the uh, Ganden Monastery in Lhasa, Tibet, they prepare food for around 2,500 monks. During this, they prepare this traditional tea in large cauldrons and kettles. Oh, let's go. The big cauldron. The big stuff. Each night, they boil the water and the tea itself. Uh, and, the, or, and the tea itself contains around 16 bricks of the tea and hundreds of kilograms of butter. Each step comes with its own prayer. Once the tea is ready, one monk sounds the gong to let others know the tea is ready. Here is uh, one such brick of tea. I always you. find it interesting, the, the, the brick-type teas. I've never actually had one, but I've Same. seen them around. They're pretty. Yeah. I need to try and try more teas someday. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, when tea leaves, yak butter, and wooden butter churns are not available, people often make butter tea using tea bags, different types of butter available in the market, and a blender to churn. Here are some butter tea churns from the Sera Monastery in Tibet. Those are cool-looking butter churns. Mm-hmm. Damn. I am into that. That's cool. Yeah. I've, I've never thought of, like, something as workhorse as a butter churn being something that someone could make, like, you know, like, look really, like, you know, pretty and ornate like that. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Customs. 
Drinking butter tea is a regular part of Tibetan life. Before work, a Tibetan will typically enjoy several bowlfuls of this beverage, and it is always served to guests. Citation needed. Since butter is the main ingredient, butter tea provides plenty of caloric energy and is particularly suited to high altitudes. The butter may also help prevent chapped lips. This is reminding me of, like, something I saw someone say in chat earlier and also just, like, saw someone say, like, a while ago where, like, uh... Sometimes, like, Arctic explorers would just, like, bring just, like, a block of butter with them because of, like, the caloric density and efficiency of it and just, like, eat butter. You know, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Just eat a damn stick of butter while you're on, on, on the move. According to the Tibetan custom, butter tea is drunk in separate sips, and after each sip, the host refills the bowl to the brim. Thus, the guest never drains his bowl. It is constantly topped up. If the visitor does not wish to drink, the best thing to do is leave the tea untouched until the time, until the time comes to leave and then drain the bowl. In this way, etiquette is observed and the host will not be offended. Another custom recognized by Tibetans is celebrating the birth of their children a few days after the child's, the child's birth, to dissolve the bad luck the child brings from its mother's womb. Usually the celebration is attended by the parents, friends, and relatives, who bring the child gifts, including yak butter tea. Tibetan Buddhism is a common practice, and due to such beliefs, the yak butter is used in the tea, or the yak butter used in the tea, is held in high regard, such as karma palma. The Tibetan monks would consume the butter tea twice a day, and on occasion enjoy the beverage with paksuma, a special rice porridge. Is this the yak butter tea article? Yes. I mean, it's, it's the butter tea article, but it's primarily used with yak butter, at least traditionally. Butter tea is also used for eating sampa by pouring onto it uh, and mixing well. Uh, samba is a Tibetan and Himalayan staple foodstuff. Uh, particularly prominent in the central part of the region, glutinous meal made from roasted flour, usually barley flour, sometimes also wheat flour, usually mixed with the salty Tibetan butter tea, eaten in Turkestan and Mongolia, where it is known as zamba. Interesting. You know, kind of like a, a porridge or a gruel type of thing. Mm -hmm. Neat. Uh, the con- the, I almost read that as the concrete, the concentrate. Produced by That's concrete, baby! <laughs> Cement! <laughs> Welcome to Zombacon! <laughs> the concentrate, produced by repeatedly boiling tea leaves, will keep for several days and is commonly used in towns. The tea is then combined with salt and butter in a special tea churn. Uh, Mdong Mo, definitely not pronouncing that right, uh, and churned vigorously before serving hot. Now, an electric blender is often used. Although there is no formal ceremony for the preparation of the tea, butter tea is drunk at different Tibetan ceremonies. During a proper Sherpa funeral ceremony, it is custom for the deceased's relatives to invite the guests into their house with a cup of butter tea. During the Tibetan New Year, Losar, ceremonies last for three days in the monasteries. Prior to their long prayers in the afternoon, monks start the morning with butter tea and sweet rice. In popular culture, Butter tea is used in the title of a book of poems by the exiled Tibetan Ten Fun. He was born in Lhasa, Tibet, although the day of his birth is not available. His book, Sweet Butter Tea, A Book of Poems, contains poems about his childhood. This was his first book of poems that he published in English. Because of this, maybe many of his friends in Dharmasala, India, nicknamed him Sweet Butter Tea. Uh, Dharmasala is where he currently resides. See also... Masala chai, noon chai, bulletproof coffee, which links to a human. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. I don't like that one. I'm not clicking on it. List of butter dishes, list of Tibetan dishes, uh, sute, sai, and Tibetan cuisine. This guy's a grifter? Ah. That explains it. I see. Remains to be seen just how bulletproof he is, I suppose. I don't know what I meant by that. Monk with pot of butter tea at Key Monastery in India. Cool teapot. 
uh, Monk from uh, Tashil Hunpo pouring butter tea. Another very cool kettle. Yeah. Hell yeah. All around the world, people are wearing lots of good hats, and that does make me happy. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, German Butterbrot. A German staple food. This... This was in the sandwich stream. This was in the sandwich stream. This was in the sandwich oh stream. This was in the sandwich Dreams stream. Ah, uh, you were by my side all along. My guiding butter light. The German word Butterbrot. Literally, butter bread equals bread with butter. <laughs> butter bread equals bread with butter. <laughs> I can't believe we have a repeat contender! Let's go! <laughs> Returning champion! Describes a slice of bread topped with butter. <laughs> slice of bread could be served with cheese, sweet toppings, or a slice of sausage, and is still called Butterbrot. The words in formal and colloquial German and the different dialects for Butterbrot, different from, uh, Bele Belegtisbrot, with cheese, sausages, etc., simply Brot, bread, a uh, bitter stuhl, stühle, a schnitte, all three low German and Berlinerish dialect, Botteram, a uh, colonian dialect, Dutch Botteram, Butterken, lower Rhine dialect, to Bem, or Beme, upper Saxon German, or Knifte, uh, that is, uh, uh, Ruhrdeutsch. Although it is increasingly replaced by other foods, it remains a common staple food in Germany. Since 1999, the last Friday in the month of September was made the Day of German Butterbrot by the Marketing Organization of German Agricultural Industries. Russian adopted the term Butterbrot uh, for the New High German, or from the New High German Butterbrot, perhaps as early as the 17th century during the reign of Peter the Great. And what's so great about him? He liked eating butter and bread, so do I, jackass. <laughs> You ain't special. <laughs> That's why they killed him. <laughs> In modern Russian, the term is a more general meaning, whatever the ingredients on top of the slice of bread is. Uh, from Russian, the term butbrod or butterbrod was adopted into Azerbaijani, Belarusian, Georgian, uh, Kazakh, Ukrainian, and Lithuanian. Comparison with sandwiches. The butter stream is still going? Yes. Sure we are, is. We are Welcome. here in the list of butter dishes and foods. We have more to go. Comparison with the sandwiches. At long last, the crossover. To the one person earlier who was asking, go read the list of sandwiches, and I was so, so cocksure, was like, oh, I already did that one. I hope you specifically are happy about this turn of events, because I know I fucking am. <laughs> a butterbrot is a commonly a single slice of bread and one ingredient on top of the butter or margarine. For breakfast, this ingredient tends to be sweet and can be marmalade, jam, honey, chocolate spread, hazelnut spread, or the less common peanut butter. See, that's just, that's just normal breakfast. Like, you know, you toast your bread, you put butter and jam on it. Or, you know marmalade honey the thing that is uh, sounds wild and kind of like overly indulgent to me is bread butter and then hazelnut or peanut butter i i suppose like that and i don't know this is as much a thing in 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 the, the canadias but but nutella that that's that's chocolate hazelnut spread that, right that's yeah breakfast sometimes e even then like nutella with butter just sounds like overly decadent that's, that's true. That's a that, little much. That, that's like something you would put on like a... I don't know. You would put on like a, a, a sandwich and then like a, I don't know, a drag queen in her 30s or 40s would go, oh, how sinful about it, you know? <laughs> Incredibly specific. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> right. I'm just amazed by how specific you could be and still be completely right. Also, I do want to shout out uh, Jill Katz in chat saying the cutting board looks like an Amogus. This is hippo to me. <laughs> it, it, it's literally a hippo. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. 
Hippopot among us. That's that's the wrong overlay. I left the talk sprite, so that's the wrong one! <laughs> I'm failing at my buttons after hitting the Among Us button! Help! 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 <laughs> Sam, we sent us to hell. <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Peanut butter. For dinner, uh, or as boxed lunch, or... Uh, and often also for breakfast, the butterbrot is eaten with something savory on top. Usually a large slice of cold meat or cheese, or sliced German Wurst. Uh, or one of the countless cream cheese varieties. Or even an entire schnitzel. Or halved mincemeat patty. Or hard-boiled egg slices, or egg salad, or other spreadable creamy salads, or smoked salmon, or various savory spreads like liverwurst, including a wide range of vegetarian spreads. That's just going, yeah, people will put butter on bread and then put something on top of it. Like, yeah! <laughs> Brand new meal just dropped! You can take a bit of bread and put some butter on it and put fucking anything you want on it. That's, that's how bread works. <laughs> that's meal, baby! Oh my god, that's meal. Oh, I do kind of just want some bread. I literally had just, like, a piece of toast with some butter on it this morning with my, like, haunted picture of eggs. It was good. It looked good. Boxed lunch butterbrot can be folded for easier handling, excuse me, and as such, resembles a sandwich. In Austria, butterbrot only refers to a slice of bread with butter. If a topping is added, it is named after the topping. For instance, a uh, kassebrot, cheese bread, or wurstbrot, sausage bread. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Again, I don't have a sword. That was me grabbing my water bottle. Oh my god, I'm still going. There's more butter to talk about. The derivatives of the British sandwich uh, and the butterbrot of the German-speaking countries differ in some ways. The Butterbrot is usually made from typical breads of German-speaking countries, which are much firmer, juicier, clarification needed? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That's a powerful addition. There, there is so much work being put in here by clarification needed. Yeah! <laughs> and fuller in taste. And with a crispy crust compared to English sandwich slices. One popular type is, uh, Wollkornbrot, whole grain bread, which has a sourish, full, savory taste due to the use of sourdough as a leavening agent, and which often contains rye, uh, albeit bread made from wheat flour is usually the most common variety. Wollkornbrot exists in dozens of varieties with respect to taste, shape, color, etc. Uh, however, Germans also know a large variety of white or mixed bread kinds. Baguette or ciabatta are so common they are sold in every supermarket. And many modern German families simply eat toast with toppings for breakfast, as it's cheaper and faster. <laughs> <laughs> Ach ja, Klaus! This brought you so juicy, nicht wahr? <laughs> yeah, I'm also choosing to read clarification needed here as, um... <laughs> what did they mean by this? <laughs> also, yeah, I do appreciate this whole tangent just being... By the way, did you know? Germans know about a lot of different breads. <laughs> Another very popular bread type is Brüchten. Bread rolls. or br I never remember how like the, the umlaut over the O is pronounced. Uh, Neither do I. Of which I I'm not an umlaut knower. That's okay. I still love you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your support in these trying times. <laughs> of course! Of which countless varieties exist in any possible shape, size, and made from any possible flour combination. Likely even more important. <laughs> Our differences with respect to what is eaten on top of a butterbrot or in a sandwich. Although exceptions exist, a butterbrot is commonly not expanded the way sandwiches are. One slice of cheese and one, or in case of thin slices, maybe two slices of cold meat, are commonly considered sufficient. 
adding lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions, mustard, mayonnaise, etc. happens only following individual preferences. Also, the ratio of bread and, quote, topping is relatively constant. Thick, fancy sandwich fillings have almost no equivalent for the Butterbrot. That's... <laughs> it's so funny, they're just being like, yeah, this is a delicacy, nationally beloved. Bread and butter and a single fucking thin slice of shaved ham. You want more than that? Make a goddamn sandwich out of my house. Leave. <laughs> German speakers differentiate between the German-style Butterbrot and the British-style sandwich by using the English word sandwich for the latter. <laughs> okay, cool! <laughs> Glad to see that's the distinction. Uh-huh. Present-day use. In German-speaking countries, the Butterbrot has been displaced gradually in the last 40 years by muesli, breakfast cereals, breakfast. I have to fucking hang on. I have to get something on my Discord really quick. I have to get something right now. I pinned it in like the game channel on my Discord because it's so fucking important to me. It's so fucking important to me. Breakfast. 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 Waiting some patient. <laughs> oh, you're not gonna hear it because it was played over Discord. I see. <laughs> it's it's a clip. I will continue to be so patient. It's a clip from fucking Wario's Woods, I think, where for some reason they just had toads go, breakfast. In German speaking, I read that. All right, breakfast cereals or toast for breakfast and takeaway bakery products during daytime. Nonetheless, it remains a common staple food among many Germans. In addition, it remains popular in the evening. It is also eaten a lot on hiking trips. In many parts of Germany, the Butterbrot is still very common for second breakfast at school or work. Much more often eaten than, Wait, for they example, got second fast food. In real? Hang on, I gotta move to Germany. Germans are just hobbits, aren't they? Confirmed? 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 Damn. I don't have the stomach for it, but the idea of second breakfast is a, is a, is a comforting one to me. Oh, same. <laughs> I eat one breakfast and I'm like, ah, I'm stuffed. I couldn't eat another bite for a couple hours. Uh, usually in September every year, the Central Marketing Society for German Agriculture, uh, or Cockman Asses, CMA, the agricultural industry's now, now defunct lobby group, used to declare a, quote, day of the German Butterbrot. The 8th Butterbrot Day's motto in 2006 was re-experience enjoyment! Help! <laughs> help! 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 <laughs> Commands for Germans! <laughs> the celebration was one of many quote days of dot 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 and not very well known in Germany <laughs> I like the they felt the need to remind you that it didn't go very well <laughs> the German cockman asses were determined to make sure people would eat as much butterbrot as possible to drive up German butter sales. Germans didn't give a shit. German commands is not taken on Twitter? Oh no. <laughs> Someone's about to have an idea, aren't they? <laughs> In Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and other former Soviet republics, Butterbrod hasn't experienced any decline and remains a common staple of food, usually distinguished from sandwiches. In the Russian language, the term sandwich hasn't been russified to the same degree and hasn't been in use as long as Butterbrod, and usually sandwich is only used for two slices of bread with some ingredient in between, especially sandwiches made in fast food chains and restaurants. Urban Legends Hello? Urban legends. 
Brutterbrot is said to always fall to the floor, and especially on carpet with the buttered side downwards, an example of Murphy's Law. That's just... people just say that about buttered toast, though. A common explanation is that the top side is usually heavier than the bottom side. Particularly... particularly... Okay, the, take your time. If the bread is additional toppings, such as Nutella or jam. <laughs> if you go into the bathroom and say bitter brought three times the lights off, a ghost will appear and force feed you a stick of butter! Awesome! <laughs> Another is tied to the common height of tables. <laughs> the subject has been researched by various sources, including the German children's series, <laughs> Die Sendung mit der Maus, and the scientific German TV series Quarks & Co. It is often joked about what would happen if you tied a butter a butterbrot to the back of a cat, in the same manner that hypothetical buttered toast attached to the back of a cat is sometimes joked about, with it being debated whether the feline would still honor the popular axiom that a cat would always land on its feet, or the butterbrot would be stronger, making the cat fall on its back. Alternatively, it is sometimes humorously suggested the cat would simply levitate as it would be unable to satisfy both criteria for landing. This is just like good old days troll physics. This is like a global <laughs> experience. <laughs> And this article is great! And they're like, this is a specifically German thing. This is a specific German thing that the Germans experience. And it's like, this was just the internet in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s. <laughs> My take on it is that if you put the buttered toast on the back of a cat, buttered side up, and cat feet down, uh, and then you lift the cat up and let go, you create a perpetual motion machine, and the cat's just gonna keep spinning forever. But very, very slowly, because otherwise the pity would get squared. Oh, no, 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 no. So humongous fast. <laughs> we have completely opposite views on this. Like, like, R like RPMs to the level that, like, traditional turbines would be completely, like, uh, obsoleted. I, I, I put a piece of buttered toast on my cat. I pick her up so gentle. I let her go, and she goes, get down! <laughs> <laughs> Looking at s oh, really good message from Jill Katz in chat. Looking at slogans from this German Agriculture Association, one of them was, and I quote, <clears throat> "Milk is my strength." That's what a JRPG hero would say. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> You'll I mean, never not for any reasons they wanted, but it's very good. <laughs> You'll never win, Zaynort. Now I know. Milk is my power! <laughs> something Fuck. something... Milk Webkins, is this anything? Oh, so sopping wet to defeat the evil. Of the tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hold all this milk protagonist friend step forward! I've literally never seen that! That's great! That's <laughs> really good! I just saw it, like, last night! Awesome. See also, list of butter dishes, list of sandwiches, open sandwich. How soon we forget the Spamton plush? I am so happy, so, so fucking happy- Turning that, around slowly. That fan gamer paid, uh, item label, like, you know, official advertising money to make a Webkin's milk plush reference. <laughs> It is, in fact, watching the stream right now, but not with milk. Oh, right, yeah, your fucking haunted Spamton plush that you have. <laughs> haunted Spamton plush that drinks all my Pepsi and calls me a bitch. <laughs> Does he call you a bitch? No, I haven't figured out how to make him talk. He's very quiet. Do you, is it not like the nose? Or the head or something? I, I, I suppose I haven't throttled him around too much. Damn. Yeah, I, I, I think VIP lets you post any links you want. I think that's fine. I think you can do it. Try it. There you go. It works. Hell yeah. I will take down this for a sec so I can click on a dad and give it a look. <laughs> They're holding it with their hands! They're holding it with their hands! <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of specifically smile and step forward. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Where were we? 
buttercream. Cream? Buttercream is a little long. Oh, I'm starting to guess. <laughs> I'm starting to lose the wind yeah, in my sails. Buttercream is. Oh, also referred to as butter icing or frosting, <laughs> is used as either filling, coating, or decorating cakes. The main ingredients are butter and some type of sugar. This article needs additional citations for verification. <laughs> Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources. Unsourced material may be challenged and removed. Find sources for buttercream. News. Newspapers. Books. Scholar. Look on JSTOR for buttercream articles. <laughs> Some of this article's listed sources may not be reliable. Please help this article by looking for better, more reliable sources. Unreliable citations may be challenged or deleted. <laughs> Buttercream is fucking serious, dude. <laughs> <sighs> Buttercream is commonly flavored with vanilla. Other common flavors are chocolate, fruits, and other liquid extracts. Food coloring is commonly added to the buttercream. Uh, or food coloring is commonly added if the buttercream is being used as decoration. Buttercream can be piped or spread in decorative patterns and shapes. <sighs> Varieties. Mock cream or buttercream. Simple buttercream made by creaming butter and powdered sugar to the desired consistency and lightness. Some or all the butter can be replaced with margarine or shortening. Small amount of milk or cream is added to adjust the texture. Usually twice as much sugar as butter by weight is used. Some recipes also call for powdered milk or meringue powder. This is usually what I end up making. Uh... Just like this, this very standard bog standard buttercream. Just uh, you use like a, like an icing sugar or a powdered sugar, and then like uh, you mix in your other stuff. Usually I do chocolate when I do. Uh, compared to other types of buttercream, American buttercream uh, has fewer ingredients and is quicker and easier to make. Sweeter because of the higher amount of sugar. Because it doesn't have an egg or cooked base, it is less stable, melts easy in warm temperatures. Meringue-based buttercream. Made by beating softened butter with either Italian or Swiss meringue until the mixture is emulsified and light. Uh, meringue must be cooled to room temperature in order to not melt the butter, which has a variable melting point below 35 degrees Celsius, and is subsequently beaded in. The meringue gives buttercream a structure that is more stable in warm temperature. Swiss meringue buttercream. Heating granulated sugar in egg whites until the sugar dissolves, whipping it until it forms a meringue. The meringue is then whipped with butter and flavorings. Italian meringue buttercream. Drizzling, I thought it said by dizzying. Drizzling a hot sugar syrup into already whipped egg whites while continuing to whip. The meringue is then whipped with butter and flavorings. You ice your cakes with butter? Butter is mostly there, like, uh, for the texture component of it. It is, like, largely sugar and other, like, you know, additions for, like, you know, the taste of it. Um, let's see, let's see. What else, what else, what else? Uh, I just read Italian meringue. Other varieties. Ermine frosting is also known as boiled milk frosting. Or cooked flour frosting. Hang on, I gotta time something out for being a dipshit. You think about what you said. Uh, ermine frosting is also known as boiled milk frosting or cooked flour frosting. Made by cooking flour and milk until it becomes a, a thick paste or roux, the cooked milk texture is then beaten with butter until light. Ermine frosting is considered to be old-fashioned. It's less common than other types of buttercream. Less sweet and has a texture similar to whipped cream. Ermine frosting was traditionally used to frost red velvet cake. Huh. French buttercream, also known as pâte à bonde based buttercream, or common buttercream, is made with whipped egg yolks. And that's it, I guess. They won't tell any, any more than that. <laughs> German buttercream. Custard-based buttercream, also known as German buttercream or creme mousseline, is prepared by beating together pastry cream and softened butter and may additionally be sweetened with extra confectioner sugar. This is not a cake. This is like a couch cushion on top of some bricks. The world's squarest cake. I wouldn't want to eat this. I wouldn't want to eat this. I... This is kind of like a weird thing, I feel like, relatively recently. I mm -hmm. just love square, perfectly smooth wedding cakes. People love the ultra-smooth-down, like, super, like, flat...
textured, like, icings on cake, and it makes my fucking skin crawl. I hate it. <laughs> and that's like, that's not even like an edible ribbon either. That They just put a regular ass ribbon on it. Hey, Puzz, if we ever have a wedding, can we, like, not get a cake like this? <laughs> oh, extremely. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> also, here's some chocolate cupcakes with raspberry butt cream. All right. Uh, Butterkuchen. Or Zuckerkuchen. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit heat meal. Little bit. This time I tried so hard to not just say Butterkuchen. <laughs> <laughs> and no one else skipped the bit. Uh huh. This does look a little bit like flatbread. A little bit. A little bit sweet crap, bread. Simple German butter cake baked on a tray. Flakes of butter are distributed on the dough, which, after baking, form the characteristic... <clears throat> <sighs> Holes. The whole cake is sprinkled with sugar or streusel. After further kneading, the butter coochie is baked. I'm just gonna fucking call it that now, because it's funny to me. As a variation, the dough can be sprinkled with roasted almond flakes. Ooh, almond. I still gotta think up of what a fucking whole emote would be and make it. Oh! I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> Butterkuchen is a favorite element of Westphalian and North German coffee tables. I almost said Westphalic. Come on, what's wrong with me? Help! Yeah, what's Help! <laughs> Thank you for the tip. It is also served at wedding and fun- at wedding! <laughs> Just one. And funerals. And as a result, is sometimes called Freudenliedkuchen, joy and sorrow cake. Or, or Bierdigungskuchen, funeral cake. Regional variant is to sprinkle the butter kitchen with a sugar cinnamon mixture, rather than with sugar alone. This is very similar to Moravian sugar cake. Ooh. Huh. In Germany, in the trade, at least 30 parts butter, clarified butter, or butter fat, must be used with 100 parts of flour. See also Queen Amon, butter dishes, cakes, list of cakes? That's such a big list. That's such a big fucking list. There's a few cakes. There's a couple. And food portal. Climb into my food portal and you'll enter a world of food only. I do like the way this looks. Hmm. Was one picture just a bottle of amaretto? Hang on. Was it? You mean in here? I don't... I don't see that. There was that one tower-looking cake at the bottom. Maybe you saw that. Oh, erotic cake, huh? Well... <laughs> well, maybe this one isn't for stream. <laughs> I do like Wait. that that's considered a distinct type of cake. Ah, oh, I see. Ah, that's what you saw. It's like a weird pan, I think. Not a bottle, but would have been funny. TOS wiener cake that gets me banned from Twitch. <sighs> butterscotch. Oh, I do love me a butterscotch. It's kind of a long article. Oh. <laughs> oh, you can stop literally anytime you want. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to weigh my options here because I want to do more of this, but also my body is starting to go, you gotta stop, coach. <laughs> it it turns out, uh, when you haven't been able to stream very much in a little while, dedicating to doing an entire stream that's just literally hours straight of nothing but reading, um, a little bit hard on the pipes? Little bit. <sighs> oh, what the butter. Oh, but the butter. But the butter.
It's so yellow. Sounds like you need some sort of edible lubricant for your vocal cords. Yeah, maybe something that's like a dairy product or something that might go well uh, as a spread or as an ingredient in cooking. But what could it possibly be? You may never know. <laughs> this is my stream now. <laughs> How about this? Since we did meet fucking $400 goal, and I'm real thankful for that. At some point. It won't be next week, because next week Puzz is busy. But how about at some point... Remedial butter stream follow-up. So that we can see the rest of butter. We will have the test then, so you guys have to study between then and now. How about that? That'll be, uh... Depending on, because like, I know a bunch of folks have like specific Halloween-type plans in the works for things like that. And, God, I, I want to try and work around that, but, um... At some point, soonish. At some point, soonish. More butter. More, more butter in the stream. Breathing in aerosolized butter? No! <laughs> <laughs> Experimental cardiac arrest is a very powerful set of wizard words, though, I gotta say. <laughs> Popcorn lung! Help! 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 <laughs> okay. We will continue some other time with Butterscotch. A quick read over of what we'll, we'll have to look forward to. Buttery, which is a savory bread roll from Scotland. Chicken Kiev. Compound butter in general. Cookie butter. <laughs> Made from speculoose cookie crumb. <laughs> speculoose. Speculoose. <laughs> now that is an actual type of cookie. However, speculoose. Wait, it is. Yeah! You're fucking with me. It was on Bake Off! It was? At one point, I forget when. Sp it might not have been when we watched, Sp but it was on Bake Off. It's real! Puzz, do you want to just watch an episode of Bake Off together after we wrap up stream? I was literally gonna ask if you were up for that. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Let's fucking go! <laughs> I thought they were trying to say, like, a different word and spelled it very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, cookie butter, which I've had once and I thought it was pretty alright. Croissant. Danish pastry. Oh, this'll be a fun one when we get to it eventually. Deep fried butter. Egg butter. Mixture of butter and chopped hard-boiled eggs. Garlic butter. Compound butter, or beurre à la bourguignon. Gooey butter cake. Hard sauce. I'm a hard sauce. I cannot fly, but I am hard. Now I'm going to eat this Yapaleno drink. Butter sauce. Hollandaise sauce, which we saw. Uh, a Karelian pastry from Karelia. Kuinaman. Uh, Linzer tort. Pain au raisin. Uh, Pojarski cutlet. I don't fucking know what this one is. Never heard of it. Puff pastry. Uh, Remontes. 
and torpedo dessert. Huh. Okay, well. And some fun little pictures. <gasps> Mount of Butter, Volant, famous painting depicting butter. Oh baby, that's painting. It's that's so high in resolution! This huge butter painting. This massive butter painting. You're gonna that go- That is a very well-rendered butter. Sorry, Pop Popwar Gate in chat saying they're gonna go put melted butter in the bong? You won't survive. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna do harm to you. TF2 the demo man running at you with full force, full body speed, trying to tackle you, going, NOT ONE OF YOU'S GONNA TO SURVIVE THIS! I get Benadryl Cucumber for the 27 month resub. So soft. My butter painting. Not my butter painting, but I found it. Thank you, Spaghettio, for the raid. I hope you had a wonderful stream today. I'm very tired, so I'm wrapping up Butter Stream. But there will be a part two eventually. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all very much for tuning in, for coming on this Butter journey with me, for learning so much about Butter. And I hope you're all prepared and excited uh, for the follow-up, which will happen soon-ish. I don't know the exact date yet, but we'll try for soon, if we can help it. I uh, hope you all had a good time. Has the Ted Cruz butter cow been mentioned on this stream? I don't know what that is, so no. I vaguely remember that. I don't think I want to know what that is. <laughs> We do have some fan art. We do have some butter fan art. So I am gonna That's pull a up. That's scary sentence. That's a great sentence. I am a. <laughs> and we're gonna take a look at some things that people have drawn for the stream. Hooray! Starting with this one from Balls Guy. <laughs> Including things such as a buttered BB, butter on the dog, dog with the butter on it. It's free fatty acids! You, you gotta let it go rancid, but the acids are free. <laughs> and this bit is very funny, considering how Puzz is the one who ended up having a snack of butter. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, maybe, maybe flip that, reverse that boss. <laughs> this is gonna be so fucking funny, I turned myself into butter. I'm butter tones! I'm never doing that voice again, but thank you for the art! <laughs> <laughs> this is all very cute. I like your style. I like the way yeah, you do- Yeah, this is great. Really good color, really mm -hmm. good line work, really expressive, good line weight. Very, very good. Th thank you for knowing art terms so you can describe what I'm knowing and thinking about in more eloquent ways than I could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do my best. <laughs> Yippee! I didn't want to reply to what I wanted to put a heart next to it. Uh, here's one from Hongalongananalongongus 2.0, uh, which they did for a fucking graphic design course. <laughs> Powerful. <laughs> Your nutrition tip. Butter is slippery. That's why we eat as much as possible to lubricate our arteries and veins. Damn. Maybe Pliny the Elder or whatever the fuck was right. About this the... is a very graphic design is my passion type shirt. Great work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. This one here, uh, from Devin Halston Dreidel, uh, enjoying, uh, a classic Gustave de Laval moment. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, someone represented us as at actual scale. Yeah! <laughs> It's true, you're short. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> this from Teeth. They're butter notes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, study these so carefully, you're gonna need them for next stream. You're gonna need Stick them. Stick of butter in the background is very threatening. Great work. Oh, it's very good. I... Oh, I thought you meant the stick of butter drawn on top of the paper? I didn't notice the stick of butter on the laptop. 
awesome. Thank you for that. <laughs> really good work. <laughs> this one here from Re Reef Sharkivist. Everyone has to say thank you to the Butter Lady. It's thank all you, Butter Lady. It's all thanks to her that we could have this stream today. I don't think you should describe a stick of butter as a study snack, Adrian. That scares me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> thank you, Butter Lady. And thank you, Reef Sharkivist, for the art. Including the Martin Ghoul! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fiend. The wretch, the bastard itself. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. This one here from Duality's Downfall. And I need you to know, I saw this when I went to go on a break earlier, and I laughed so hard I felt like I was gonna fall over. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. You frickin' moron. You just got Gustav de Laval. D tag your friends to totally Gustav de Laval. Them. <laughs> Fucking love this. <laughs> Holy, can we fundraise you one of those soundboards specifically so you can make every sound Gustav de Laval? <laughs> Listen. Maybe after I've moved. <laughs> I don't want to have to worry about sensitive electronics going, you know, in a moving truck, but. That is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's eight Gustave de Laval and one missile. 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 And then one for that one fucking barrel or whatever that sounded like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's a fun little preview of things to come from Grape Soda Satellite. Hell yeah. Always a oh, treat to see your art. so far. Yeah. This one here from Vivian X. Pretty accurately describing at least one part of our relationship dynamic. <laughs> How did you know what sweater I'm wearing? That's scary. What? <laughs> Help! <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> I like that it looks like I'm trying to offer you some and you're just in agony. <laughs> no, thank you! <laughs> Why? Why the drop? <laughs> help, help, help! <laughs> thank you very much! <laughs> this one here from Unknown Toast, who says, I'm using markers, not a medium I usually use for this, because the pens I got will bleed if I do watercolor, which I usually use, so... Yippee! Oh, it looks great for not being a medium you usually use. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is real clean. I really like this one. <laughs> Butter, by the way. It's like that one fucking meme that people always do of people doing the, like, big shocked face and pointing to it. I don't remember what they call it, but in my head, that's the Travis McElroy meme uh, of butter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing multiple people say soy jack, and I don't know what that means, so... I think that's the name of the meme. Okay, I'm gonna trust you. I don't know memes. <laughs> it's just the Travis McElroy face to me. Thank you for, your, for the art. <laughs> no, another one here from Reef Sharkivist. <laughs> hang on, hang on, one more for old time's sake. Gustave de Laval. <laughs> I am a big fan of the fucking impish cat face. That's good. <laughs> Holly does this every day. I, I kind of do. <laughs> I kind of do. Oh, thank you very much. Here's this one here, uh, from 6010. The Offering. Take it. It will give you strength. Help you on your journey. This is awesome, thank you! <laughs> ah. I'm beat, I'm bushed. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. That's a uh, good fucking stream, I reckon. <laughs> Sorry I couldn't do every butter tonight. Uh, but a girl gotta fucking take it easy sometimes. <laughs> literally, 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 uh, literally. I do appreciate your support and your generosity tonight. I want to thank you all very much. Uh, that's gonna, you know, be real helpful for, like, uh... 
bills and saving up and stuff like that. Uh, we're still trying to figure out at some point, uh, you know, coordinate when we can, like, meet up uh, in person yeah, for we, a bit. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta figure that out. It, it's getting close to when we said we were gonna mm -hmm. maybe do it. We'll, we'll figure it out if it doesn't happen when we originally said. It'll just, you know, happen a bit later. That's all right. Exactly. It gives us more time for planning. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. So that's, uh, Certainly gonna help with that, because Lord knows plane tickets can be fucking expensive. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so thank you all very much for that. Um, thank you for all the subs and all the bits and all that as well. Thank you for all the hosts and raids that we had. Thank you, uh, excuse me, for, um... <laughs> <laughs> thank you for all the wonderful fan art we saw and thank you all <gasps> excuse me i have the hiccups now thank you all so much for tuning in uh you know no matter when where or how you catch these streams it is always wonderful to have you here so thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to spend it here with me and puzz and everyone here in chat and gustave de laval and butter I'm going to have the schedule for the, this coming week sorted soon. I uh, just got to, you know, figure out what to do and when. Um, all pastries might be this weekend. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, and as a bit of a teaser, depending on how I feel tomorrow, because my God, after all this reading, my throat might be fucking bushed, uh, but I'd still like to do at least a bit. Uh, but probably tomorrow... Let's get back to Dark Souls 2, why don't we? <laughs> I, I know I have the curse that makes me only able to play that game once or twice a month, but my fucking god, I want to get back to it. So, uh, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. We'll do at least a little bit, and that'll be a good time. Uh, then, you know, we'll have other stuff throughout uh, the week to look forward to. So, uh, please, look forward to it. You got any streams you're doing this week, Puzz? Um... I gotta actually work that out. Probably Tuesday. Hell Maybe yeah. that's all, because I got other shit going on next week. True. You've got to... I'm not gonna, like, you know, spill your beans and uh, on a stream or anything, but you got a busy fucking week next week. <laughs> you, I got a really busy week next week. It, it's... it's uh, <laughs> you make sure you're taking care of yourself. I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I don't know who's live right now, Butter. I'm just going to just end it, I think. Hi. <laughs> you can go watch whoever you want. Oh, wait, shit. Uh, I think Sophie and Duke are, are doing Spelunky on Sophie's channel. Are they? Wanna... Okay, let's yeah. fucking go. Let's do that. Uh, Let's chuck at him. Why don't we? All right. Uh, What's a raid message? What's a good raid oh. message? Gustave de Laval. No, that's too trite. <laughs> butter? I mean, I guess we could just do butter. <laughs> Let's get that raid rolling. Uh, if you're sticking around, I hope you enjoy Sophie's stream. She is a wonderful friend, dear, dear friend. So is Duke. Make you bungle in for the raid. We're about to do our own raid. We're ending now. The stream is over. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> So if you're sticking around for the raid, I hope you have a good time with them. I hope you enjoy Spelunky. Again, I'll probably be back tomorrow. Dark Souls 2. If not tomorrow, probably some other time this week. I'm going to try my best. I want to get back to it. Uh, maybe I'll see you then. Maybe I'll see you some other time. But no matter what happens before we head off, I'd just like to say have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves and taking care of the folks around you. And I hope to see you again soon. I hope you enjoyed my hell jump scare, by the way. <laughs>